Good morning. Would members of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee please report to Committee Room 1 for quorum? Okay, thank you. We're going to get started. No, we're just going to, you're going to be happy, Janet, you're going to be happy, because I'm moving motion to, we're going to, we're going to move it at, uh, right now. Did you circulate my motion on the, can you do that? Okay, I think we've got quorum, so we're going to start. So I'd like to officially call the meeting to order and uh, of Public Works and Infrastructure Committee and welcome our committee members and other members of council who are here today. We have eight items on the uh, today's agenda and as some of you know in the audience you were here last PWIC because you didn't get a chance to speak. We hit the sunset clause on a Friday and uh, thank you for coming back if you've indeed done that. Um, so it's a really continuation of the last PWIC meeting. Uh, for those of you who are in the room with us, there's screens at the back um, and providing real-time updates about where we are in the agenda and what's coming up next. And for those of you who are online, you can uh, follow our agenda, our debate on your computer, tablet or smartphone at www.toronto.ca backslash council. I just want to take two minutes. Um, uh, to bring to the committee's attention that today is uh, John Levy's last day with us at PWIC. So I know that he's going to be very well feted. I know, I know he's crying. Um, I know he's going to be very well feted and celebrated over the next month, but on, just on behalf of PWIC, John, we wanted to say thank you very much for your service to this committee. 
Um, the, the, really one of the biggest portfolios at City Hall, I think it's two billion plus. Uh, you've managed it, um, it with, uh, with complete expertise and talent. And I know on behalf of uh, Toronto Water, Toronto Engineering and Construction, Toronto Transportation, and Toronto Garbage. Um, these portfolios are massive. What? Oh, solid waste. I actually like garbage better. When I tweet about solid waste, I get bizarre tweets back. But uh, we won't go into that. But we should think about a renaming. Um, but uh, thank you, John, for once again correcting me throughout a meeting, which you're, uh, you've been amazing help for me as the chair in, this, uh, in my capacity, so thank you. But if you tried to summarize John Levy's accomplishments, we would be here all morning, and we would have to continue our meeting next month. So we won't do that. Uh, that will be done at Council and at, I'm sure, a big party that's being planned for him. But I just, on behalf of PWIC, just the Portland's work that you've done, uh, the waterfront revitalization. I don't know anybody who's more knowledgeable about these issues. Uh, the Gardner East, that was a very challenging file for you, I know. And uh, all the work on the, on the transit files, smart track, right through to the relief line. So uh, we're so lucky and fortunate to have had you. I think you're, without a doubt, I've been around City Hall for a long time. I don't want to admit how long because uh, it's been decades, but in different capacities. But I have to say, uh, certainly been at part of City of Toronto since amalgamation and without a doubt I think you're the best deputy city manager Toronto's ever had so thank you so much for your service for your commitment and I know when you go out the door you're going out the door with your integrity intact which is the highest compliment so <clears throat> congratulations John Okay, on to declarations of interest. Are there any of those? Any under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? I see none. I'm gonna move on to uh, confirmation of the minutes from last meeting. Can I have a confirmation, Councillor Lee? Thank you. All those in favor, that carries. Okay, now we're gonna run through the agenda. So I have a, Madam Chair, I have a procedural. Oh, thank you very much. Go ahead. Point of order, actually. <clears throat> I'd like to place a procedural motion um, and I'll read that um, <coughs> got it on the screen that to ensure that all speakers are treated equally in that they are given only one opportunity to speak on this matter speakers who previously spoke on this matter to the committee on January 19 2018 uh, on item PWIC 26.6 not be permitted to speak again on February 27 2018 for item PW 27.1 Number two, that the speakers who were registered to speak on item PW 26.6 who did not have an opportunity to speak be heard in the order that they were registered followed by any additional speakers that have registered to speak since the January 19, 2018 meeting. Number three, that speakers who have not pre-registered be allowed to register to speak on item PW 27.1 until 10 a.m. on February 27, 2018 after which no further registration is allowed and the speaker's list will be closed. And number four, that given no new information has been presented by staff and to ensure that all speakers will have had the same opportunity to speak on this matter, the same procedural rules be applied for item PW 27.1 as the committee applied on January 19, 2018 for item PW 26.6, namely that the length of public presentations be limited to three minutes and that questions of speakers by members of council be limited to three minutes with one round of questions per member. And uh, number five, that questions from staff from members of council be limited to three minutes with one round of questions per member and speaking time for all members of council be three minutes. And I'll just make the note that it, it was a bit of an unusual circumstance that we ended the meeting in the middle of a speaker's list. Uh, and I believe that it's fair to treat those speakers the same that we will treat the speakers today and hence uh, the motion that I'm bringing forward. Okay, so we have that before us. I think we, we've also had an explanation of why we have that before us, to th keep things consistent and fair. Um, all those in favor of the motion before us? Opposed, that carries unanimously. Thank you, uh, Councillor Holliday. We're gonna move now through the agenda. And um, first item is, got a lot of deputations, PW 27.1, reimagining Young Street. That is the carryover from last meeting and Councillor Holliday's moved a motion related to that. Um, <clears throat> PW 27.2, contract award for tender call 20, 221-2017, contract number 
long numbers for the Coxwell Bypass Tunnel from the Ashbridges Bay Treatment Plant to Coxwell Ravine Park. On this item, I had a very quick motion I wanted to move to accelerate the work. This has got the blessing of city staff, both the head of water, Toronto Water, and the head of construction and engineering. So it's been pre-circulated to you. Um, we don't have, we have bare quorum, as you can see. And after the um, lunch break, Councillor Holliday is going to be chairing the meeting. I unfortunately have to leave. Um, so we've got very tight quorum. So we need to move through this agenda very quickly so we can focus our, most of our time on reimagining young and because of the uh, number of pe people engaged on that issue. So uh, if people are um, happy with this motion, again, cleared with staff just to try to accelerate the work, which is very exciting. Go ahead. So this is uh, actually recommendation three then. Are you moving the staff recommendation as well? Yes, I'm moving the staff recommendation. All right. Thank you, Councillor Chin Lee. Uh, I'm moving the staff recommendation as well as uh, this, this one, one to try to accelerate this, this work. I think there's, uh, everybody agrees. Uh, I moved a motion on this actually in 2012 when I was on executive during an interesting term to try to accelerate the rehabilitation of the Don River. This is the first piece of, um, first major piece of the Don River work and I think we're all very important, you know, very focused on improving Lake Ontario's water quality. So this is uh, very exciting. I just want to thank uh, both Michael and Lou who have done incredible work on this and it's a, it's a kind of a groundbreaking uh, opportunity to move this forward. So, okay, all those in favor? Speaker, Speaker I did have questions and wanted to speak to it, but. Well, I think you'll have to do it offline. Why is that? Well, because we want to we want to move it we want to move it here at the uh, top of the agenda. So, all those in favor? You can't. Excuse me, Speaker. Oh, so no one will hold it is what you're saying? Oh, we have a quorum issue. Mm -hmm. We had to abandon this meeting last time because of sun, the sunset clause. So these issues we wanted to move through quickly because we're really we we can't. I'm not going to. I don't want these poor people to come back again to not be able to speak on reimagining young. Put it at the end of the agenda. Well, then we risk losing quorum on a very important contract. That's what I'm, I'm just trying to paint the picture. So if I'm asking if you could, I know Councillor Fletcher, you're very invested in this and been very involved and, and uh, well, she's looking at me. Well, you have, it's your area of the world. Okay. Well, I know that, well, so Councillor Fletcher, I think, has been, but um, we, we take a risk of not approving a contract. So that's why I'm, I'm, you know, we've got a great motion here that staff have helped me craft. It's, it's committed to moving this forward, uh, accelerating it. So I think we're gonna move ahead. All those in favor? Pardon? What this means, Chair, is this does not go to Council and no councillors have any opportunity to debate, discuss, or question this. No, it doesn't go to Council. This is it within the purview of committee. Yeah, I mean, no, it I doesn't go to Council. It's a half a billion dollar project. It's yeah, I understand the that. project ever. I understand that. I'm, what I'm trying to do is move this forward, and, yeah. but to delay it is not helpful. Well, Councillor Davis, there's not, there's no deputants on this. I don't think that's a fair comment at all. So, what does the committee want to do? Do you want to quickly take their questions now and their and and? Yes, we are. That's what we're doing. No, it doesn't go to council. That is the rules. It does, this does not go to council. Because that's council procedure. It, it's within the purview of committee to approve this. This does not go to council. That is what I've been told, unless I'm wrong. What would committee like to do? 
So just move it. Well, then we take the risk of not, not getting this through today. Okay, um, let's keep going through the agenda. So the next one is uh, number three, which is contract award for professional engineering and program management services for delivery of the coordinated Toronto Water and Transportation Services Capital Works Program. All those in I, favor? Does I, somebody want to move it? I have questions on this as well. I want to know about the green infrastructure standards and whether they're being integrated in this and whether or not well, I think that's mandatory that they integrate that. It's across the board. Okay, I'll move that for you. I'll move that on behalf of Councillor Davis. I'll take what care of that. Mo that, the, that, that, it's, that the green infrastructure program be incorporated, that's integrated, that it's part... John. Okay, can you just read it out, Councillor Davis, because we'd like to move on. Just the intent of the motion and so we can vote on it. If people could have their motions prepared, uh, most people have done that, so it would be very helpful. This is disruptive and creating delays. <clears throat> can you just read out your intent to your motion and we can vote on it? I think it's people are. Sorry. That the projects included in this tender include the implementation of the green infrastructure standards. Okay, all those in favor, opposed, that carries. Item as amended. Item as amended. Oh. Uh, who's, I guess, do we need a mover of the item? Do you, who wants, so Councillor Carmichael Greb is moving the item, uh, point three. All the, as amended, all those in favor, carried. Okay, 27.4 is the feasibility of ensuring the disconnection. Now we've got speakers on this one. Feasibility of ensuring disconnection of sanitary and storm laterals at the time of demo demolition. We have speakers on that, so I will hold that in uh, Councillor Holliday's name because he'll be chairing uh, when we get to that point. PW 27.5, school bus loading zone, we own a drive. So moved. That's moved. Uh, all those in favour, that carries. PW 27.6, lane designation Victoria Park Avenue at Dawes Road. All those in favour. Oh, who wants to move that? Councillor Lee is moving that. Thank you, Councillor Lee. All in favour, that carries. Uh, PW 27.7. Now, do we have speakers on this item? Oh, but I have a hold. So, Councillor Holliday would like to hold it. Uh, the Diamond Lanes. So, this is Allen Road and Dufferin Street Diamond Lanes change of use update. So, if I could just ask staff, my understanding is there's another motion, there's another report coming related to this. Sorry, if I could get to. Uh, transportation, sorry, I know you were being um, chatted with there. Um, <clears throat> Allen Road and Dufferin Street Diamond Lanes, change of use update. Councillor Holliday's holding it, I think for Councillor Pasternak, but is there another report coming forward on this that we could bundle the two, or there's, there's some, that's what I keep hearing, there's nothing related to this, the, I mean the u number of passengers related to the Diamond Lanes. Uh, through the chair, there is a review of the HOV network upcoming, but that work is being initiated this year, so we wouldn't be able to report back um, before the, the council term uh, breaks. Okay, so it'll be next term. Okay. 
But it, there is one, it is coming back to where you're reviewing num the numbers. Okay. So what if there was motions moved on that today? Could there be motions moved related to that today? Because I've heard that rumor. There certainly could be motions moved on it that. It would be in order with this report. It would be in alignment with this report. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's helpful just so we know how to guide that. Okay, and then the last one is PW 27.8, Pilot Bike Share Program in Southeast Scarborough. And we do have speakers on that, so I'm going to hold that in Councillor Stephen Holliday's name. Okay, so I think it's time to get this started. Oh, no, there's one more. Okay, there is um, Councillor Holliday, uh, no, I'm sorry, Councillor Mahavik. On the pink sheet, if you look at your pink sheet, committee members, this was circulated a few minutes ago. Um, I looked into this last week, and staff are completely uh, in agreement with this motion. Uh, I think it was a tiny bit of an oversight, and it's related to Metrolink's work and making sure that we keep uh, some restrictions in place because that work has been extended. So I'm in full support of this given the, uh, the conversations I've had with staff around this. And so I'd like to move that. It's been, I'd like to, do I need to introduce it? Yes. I'd like to introduce it, and now I'd like to move it. Okay, all those in favor? Yep. All those against, that carries unanimously. Okay, so, you didn't do uh, number eight? Yes, we did, we did number eight. Did you adopt it? No, we didn't adopt it because there's speakers on it. Okay, I'm gonna do that after. Let's get started and, um, and Councillor McMahon, I'll speak to you about your, your item in a minute and we can add it later. So we're going to get started with PW 27.1, Reimagining Young Street, Shepherd to Finch, Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Study. Uh, we have a number of speakers. Madam Chair? Yes. Over in the corner here, Councillor Shiner. I did attend Voice the last meeting and uh, no, I was called scrawny last time. That's right. We'll have to remember and that. I, I, I'd love to be able to have that look, but I don't. But anyways, um, and I was here for the deputants. I do have another meeting this morning, so I'm going to step out from here while you have your deputants. And I know that my colleague, Councillor Holliday, is going to be getting a draft of a motion I had. So if I can get back in time to speak, I will try to. If not, I'll leave it to you to adjudicate on this and consider this matter. But. Uh, Councillor Holliday has said he'll take carriage of a motion which I have in regards to this item. Okay, thank you very much. It's, we've got quite a few speakers, Councillor Shiner, so you may be back. Um, okay, so we're going to get started with our list here. I'm going to have to share with you right now that I like to be accommodating, but in this case I'm going to have to ask you to stick exactly to the three minutes so it's fair across the board. Some people tend to uh, sneak past the three minute mark and we're not gonna be able to accommodate that today. We're gonna have to be very heavy handed. Um, so my apologies in advance for that, but we have to, we have to get through this item today. It's, it, I don't wanna see it delayed another month and I would like to see this go to council. So the first speaker is Kevin Cooper. If Kevin, if you could come forward, you have three minutes. You can watch it there, the clock there. Good morning, Chair, 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 Chair Jay Robinson and members of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. My name is Kevin Cooper. I'm the Campaigns and Engagement Manager at Cycle Toronto, and I'm here in support of the recommendation from staff to reimagine Young Street as a street that works for everyone. For those who responded to the, city of, uh, to the city's final Reimagining Young survey, 89% expressed support for Transform Young. Many local residents explained their reasoning to us in clear terms. They want to live next to a vibrant main street, not a six-lane highway. Clearly, there is demand for change in this part of our city. What are the strengths of the Transform Young plan? I'd like to highlight three. First, we support Transform Young because it creates a more livable downtown North York. Toronto's official plan identifies North York Centre as one of four mixed-use and transit accessible centres in the council-approved tenure and in the tenure council-approved, sorry, and in the council-approved tenure cycling network plan. Young Street was identified as the primary cycling corridor in North York. More than 80,000 Torontonians now live within walking distance of this part of Young Street, and these residents know full well that, when young, that young is congest, congested at rush hour. However, as shown by the staff report, most accept this. In fact, north of the 401, 73% of morning rush hour drivers on Young Street are coming from York Region. 
By prioritizing this through traffic, we undermine the livability of our communities who call this part of Young Street home. Second, Transform Young increases transportation options for Torontonians. Motor vehicle volumes and mode share in, sorry, motor vehicle mode share in North York Centre is in decline, projected to drop to 36% by 2031. Transform Young would result in a street that acknowledges and supports this modal shift. Staff have projected that in the Transform Young scenario, in 2031, the impact on travel times will be a mere one to two minutes. It would be short-sighted and ineffective to spend tens of millions of dollars rebuilding and re resurfacing Young Street as a street only for cars. In addition, Transform Young is the only cost-effective option that is eligible for both provincial and federal transportation funding that would cover a large portion of the construction cost. If we genuinely want to tra tackle transit con or traffic congestion, we must transform our streets, compelling drivers to adjust their travel patterns while encouraging walking, cycling and transit. This is how we will get Toronto moving. Third, Transform Young is the Vision Zero road safety project that North York needs. Safe infrastructure for cyclists on Young Street is just one part of Toronto's Vision Zero road safety plan. Young Street needs to shorter crossing distance for pedestrians and lower speeds for cars to prevent more traffic injuries and fatalities. In our city, 43 pedestrians and one cyclist were killed in traffic collisions in 2016, and then in 2017, 42 pedestrians and four cyclists were killed. Is a two-minute delay for a worthwhile trade-off when it comes to saving lives? Okay, thank you, Kevin. Any questions for Kevin? Okay, Just one. I, I didn't catch the conclusion of your statement there. I was wondering if you could just summarize the last part for me, please. Listen to what Torontonians are asking for. By redesigning Young Street for two, with two lanes in each direction, you will demonstrate real leadership in the efforts to eliminate traffic fatalities in our city, to make transportation options more available for all Torontonians, and to create a more livable downtown North York. Support Thank you. Transform Young. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we're going to move to our next speaker, Mr. Gao. He's not, oh, you're there? Oh, welcome. And Christopher Hoyle, if you could be ready next, and then Michael Black, if you could be prepared uh, for, to come after Christopher. Okay. Uh, welcome, and you can go ahead anytime. I use the, uh, 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 could we get some IT help from IT? Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> or AV, I'm sorry, AV. I think it seems to be working. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Shen, and uh, thank you, councillors, for giving me a. Oh, yeah. Okay. For giving me a chance to uh, speak up, and uh, I'm currently a resident living in this affected neighborhood. And I want to say I strongly support reimagining Young. And why? Uh, one picture is better than uh, a thousand words. My major point is cars have a poor spatial efficiency. Now, what do I mean? Look at the picture, it's uh, pretty self explaining Moving 40 persons by car versus moving them by bus versus bikes. Did you notice the space car take? OK, next slide. Same story, parking. The space for parking one car. You see how many bikes can be parked? Same story, cars versus pedestrians. You see how much space cars occupies and how much pedestrian, uh, pedestrians actually being squeezed into the narrow sidewalk. And if these people are taking the equal space, fair space as car drivers, how much space they should take? So my question, why? Why is this fair? Young Street current state, six car lanes, zero bike lane, crowded sidewalk. So this is the downtown setting, right? Why do we have this uh, priority all given to car and drivers? How about pedestrians? So there are also lots of other benefits, social benefits, significant benefits for promoting walking and biking, right? Less local driving, take more cars off the street if I can walk, if I can ride a bike, right? Less pollution, less energy consumption, less fatal accidents, better community health, because people in the neighborhood will do more walking and biking, right? More food traffic for local business. So what's our vision? What do we think Young Street should look like, right? Complete street supporting all people, all transportation mode, right? You can see people walking with white sidewalk, bike lanes, public transportation, and uh, private single 
occupant vehicles, right? Vision number two, separate the bike lanes for cyclist, uh, cyclist safety, right? And by the way, this is New York City. Okay, if New York City can do this, why the hell we in Toronto cannot do this? 15 seconds. Yeah, vision number three, wider sidewalks. Notice how family actually use the sidewalk, right? And how business can use the alfresco dining. Vision number four, which streetscape you like? On the left, the current young street along the, uh, between Shepherd and the Finch. <clears throat> On the right, it's a, a city with a complete street supporting all, all users. Thank you right? very much. Any okay. questions for the deputant? Speaker, uh, seeing none, we're gonna move to our next speaker. Thank you very much. Sure. <clears throat> Great slides. Thank you. Christopher Hoyle, <clears throat> Young Loves Bike. Yeah, Christopher, you're up next. How are you? Good, thanks. And I've got someone else with me who's lower on the list. Who's okay, go, uh, that's fine. Do a six minute joint yeah, deputation? That's, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Right, thank you. <clears throat> Starts going before people have even sat down. Okay, well, uh, Councillor Fillion, I didn't know there was two speakers, so now we have two speakers. We can happily restart the clock. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Christopher Hoyle, and I'm the co-chair of Cycle Toronto's Young Street Working Group. Our group has collected over 2,400 pledge signatures supporting safe cycling infrastructure on Young Street. The segment of Young, which, being, which is being debated today, is a segment which is particularly near and dear to my heart. For approximately the last five years, I have worked in an office building near the intersection of Young and Shepherd. I have frequented the shops and restaurants in this area hundreds of times and commuted to this part of the city over a thousand times. Needless to say, I know the study area very well as a pedestrian, as a cyclist, as a transit rider, and also as an occasional driver. I have been following the Reimagining Young project very closely since the start and have attended all the city's public consultations. I've also spent time talking to local residents, business owners, and other people like me who work in the area. The overwhelming majority of people I've spoken to prefer the Transform Young option because it turns Young Street into a place where people actually want to spend time and a place where people can feel safe. The city's official plan calls for concentrated growth in four urban centres across the city, one of which is North York Centre. The growth is intended to be a mixture of commercial office and residential developments to enable Torontonians to work in the communities that they live in. Although there has been substantial residential development in North York Centre, the development of new office space has certainly not been keeping pace. The reality is that in its current configuration, this part of the city is simply not an attractive area for companies to set up an office. I've experienced this firsthand having seen entire floors in my own office building sit vacant for very long periods of time because the building owner couldn't find a tenant. Although there is a high density in North York Centre, it doesn't carry the same vibe that, a cor that corporate employees thrive on in a downtown environment. In fact, they've heard coworkers describe the area around our office as a wasteland. There are plenty of walkable lunchtime options um, around our, uh, sorry, to walk to to get, there are plenty of walkable lunchtime options, but the walk to get there is unpleasant to say the least. Many people eat at the same cafeteria in our building every single day and rarely visit the local businesses. By making the area more attractive, Transform Young would help local businesses thrive and also encourage future office developments. Over the years, my office has done a lot of great things to encourage employees to cycle, including indoor bike parking and showering facilities in the building. Despite this, I am one of a very small handful of people in the building who have taken advantage of these amenities. When I recommend cycling to work to my coworkers, they always tell me they won't consider it because it's not safe enough. Unfortunately, the statistics collected by the city support this claim, showing there have been 83 reported collisions in the study area, which involved a pedestrian or cyclist since 2010. Eight of these collisions resulted in death or serious injury. With Young Street coming due for a necessary state of good repair reconstruction, we've been given a once in a lifetime opportunity. If we're serious about wanting to make Young Street a place which is safe for all road users and a place where people actually want to spend their time, we really need to do something bold. The secondary alternative would most definitely fall short of achieving both of these goals. Why would we spend an additional $20 million on something which is going to give you so much less and is not what the local residents or office community wants? Transform Young is a fantastic option and I urge members of PWIC and Council to support it. Thank you. Okay, three, you're, you're on. Hi. Hi, I'm Clay McFade. Been a Willowdale resident since 1975. Back in the day, Young Street had many destinations like Dempsey's Hardware, the Willowdale Theatre, and Northtown Plaza. 
Nowadays, the destinations have changed, but Empress Walk, the North York Central Library, but the key thing is Young Street still has all the destinations people want to get to. Young Street is currently four lanes north of Finch and well south of the study area as well. So the experts and staff and the citizens all support the best plan. I'm hoping you guys will too. And please, my final point really is please don't make my North York a place to pass through. Please make it to get to a better destination, make my North York a the better destination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, thank you again. <clears throat> I just have to remind the audience that the clerk has just advised me we're not allowed to clap in committee. So if you want to uh, show your support, you can do something that uh, has no sound, <clears throat> no sound effects. Uh, but the clapping is not uh, allowed. Michael Black, you're up next. Is Michael here? I don't see Michael. No? Okay. Jess uh, Spiker is next then. Then Raymond Jean after that, so if you could be ready. Okay, go ahead. Good Welcome. Morning. My name is Jessica Speaker, and I'm here on behalf of Friends and Families for Safe Streets because we wish to voice our strong support for the Transform Young option because it will make Young Street safer for all road users, in particular people walking. I would like to speak to this briefly with my own personal experience. After my spine was broken in a violent crash when an SUV driver hit me and nearly killed me, I sometimes had to walk across University Avenue, which is also currently six lanes, and a very similar configuration to Young Street in Willowdale. I would have preferred to have avoided doing that, but it was absolutely necessary to get between specialist appointments at Mount Sinai on one side and Toronto General on the other, which saved my life after I suffered a massive bilateral pulmonary embolism as a complication of the crash. Trying to cross a six-lane street with a mobility impairment was a viscerally frightening experience that I could never have predicted before it was inflicted on me. Of course, I couldn't possibly finish hobbling across the intersection before the light changed, so impatient drivers yelled, honked, and sometimes even rushed their car at me to try to scare me out of their way, as if being mangled once by a car driver was not sufficient. So, I hope you can understand crossing six lanes filled with cars when you have a mobility restriction. Whether you are a senior, a parent with a stroller, or toddlers in tow, a wheelchair user, an injured person, or any other person with slower mobility for any reason, crossing a six lane street is daunting and it's a deterrent, and that is not fair. We know that in the study area since 2010, there have been 83 completely preventable crashes involving vulnerable road users, 83. That's more than 10 a year on a little two kilometer stretch of Young. So we at Friends and Families for Safe Streets remind you that road safety is your job. Lives depend on your decisions. A six lane highway in the middle of a densely populated neighborhood is simply not safe and never will be. The Beecroft option does nothing to address the unacceptable danger on Young Street. You all, as members of City Council, have committed unanimously to Vision Zero or the elimination of traffic fatalities, and no option besides narrowing Young Street will actually make Young Street safer. Worse. The city's cordon counts indicate that at rush hour, about 1,600 out of roughly 2,100 car commuters don't live in the city. So in effect, by keeping Young Street wide and dangerous, you would force 80,000 Willowdale residents to grapple with a very dangerous and unappealing main street and inflict on them all of the broken bones, death, and broken hearts that come with road violence, all in exchange for saving roughly 1,600 York Region car commuters 60 seconds or less. That is not a balanced approach. That is perverse. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? No, none. Thank you. Raymond Jean, Jean uh, is next. West Lansing Homeowners Association. Raymond, are you here representing that organization? Yes. Or have you got their yes. buy-in, or are you just here on your own? I'm here representing West Lansing Homeowners Okay, so you're here on behalf of them. Thank you for that clarification. Go ahead. So the West Lansing Homeowners Association 
we're, we're the area bounded between Shepherd 401 west of Young to the valley. We're at um, basically ground zero, the bottom of the funnel because the 401 is the wall. And um, while we support the concept of, um, of improved streetscape and safe cycling infrastructure, we don't feel that um, in the current implementation, proposed implementation, all residents will receive enough of those benefit to offset the negative consequence of the um, of, of the traffic lane reduction, uh, forcing more traffic into our neighborhood because of the lane reduction on Young and the elimination of two left turn at Young and Shepherd. Um, so I, I prepared an audit and basically, the as you can see in the transform Young option, there's, there's a huge red flag. Why is the center median north of uh, Shepherd 4.5 meters and south of Shepherd is only three meters? Well, the audit shows that we only receive a measly 17% um, of all potential sidewalking, and this proposal is really hiding a $12 million cycle track pilot study, which is expected to fail, and the center meeting is being padded. And also, the um, cycle, by converting a cycle track pilot study to a bike lane pilot study, which is just road paint, the city will save $10 million. Now, first, we gotta start off with the base. By keep, as you notice, the existing center median is 3.0 meters, and by, elim na by narrowing the lanes and keeping all six lanes, we get one meter of sidewalk space, which is roughly about here. This is how much we'll get on each side of Young, so I put, place it over here. Now, south of Shepherd, the problem is that you, we keep all six lanes, and we have to add three meters for the cycle track and buffer. So in other words, it eats up this one meter gain and two meters of existing sidewalk space on each side of Shepherd. And because um, this is the, as you know, the development in young, the Young Corridor focused around the subway station, and there's three of them, and while this account for 20% of the um, area, and it, it forms like 40, 40 centimeter gain in sidewalk space, the, the problem is that one third of the people here um, especially the Avondale Community Association people, they're, they're losing two meters of existing sidewalk space. This negate the one meter gain for the other two thirds. So this is gone. Now, going north of Shepherd, what we have is, oh, the 3.2 meter bike lane, 3.2 meter traffic lane being converted to 2.7 meter cycle track, which includes 0.07 uh, buffer. So, so basically you gain one, one meter and 20 centimeter, which is about here. So you would need to take this back to get back okay, to the system. Okay, time. Raymond, time. Is there questions for Raymond? So I just, I, I'm not completely clear. I know you've come to me, you always show up on my Environment Day events and you're a proponent of cycling. You've worked, right. you've come up with your own designs, I think, for 401, the 401 Young Street Exchange area. Correct. But you're, I think what you're saying is you feel that this is going to force traffic into the side streets, into your neighborhoods. It'll force traffic into my side street, and actually... We if you cut the lanes, you're saying... Pardon? If, if, you cut the, if, you, if you transform those lanes into other purposes, you're saying it will force traffic in that neck of the woods, in that neighborhood, into the side streets. Correct. That's what you're saying. Right. So even though you seem to be... I thought you were this huge bicycle advocate. You're saying this doesn't... This isn't the right... I, I am, but the thing is, I feel that it's better to put the cycling track al along the west side of Beecroft or east side of Doris, as I mentioned the last time I was here nine months ago, and I proved that over there, there's a long stretch of uh, green space where you could put safe cycling infrastructure with 10 times less conflict point as there is on Young. And in this case, in the Transform Young proposal here, there's actually no pedestrian sidewalk gain at all. It, it amounts to 30 centimeter on a, on a net weighted average, on a density weighted average for the corridor, because they're padding the center median. And do you, do you live in the neighborhood? I live in the neighborhood. I'm well, are you're, right are you east Avenue, or west right of Young? You're sorry? I'm right on Florence Avenue, right by the 401. Oh, Florence Avenue, okay. I know it well. So you're saying your association are not proponents of this plan because at the end of the day, you feel it's, gonna, it's going to 
force uh, additional traffic into your neighborhoods into onto local streets is that that's what you're saying yeah okay exactly be, in, in a we, nutshell we have an official statement at, on our website right and that's exactly what i'm stating over here right okay and, and the thing is there the current proposal is actually padding the center median and that's why we're not getting any sidewalking that's why it's 4.5 meters north okay. of north of um, Shepherd because they plan to essentially um, keep that space as a as a pl placeholder mm -hmm. right so so that they could switch back that's why it's an expensive 12 million dollars I have I just have a minute so I only have 20 seconds have you done some design work before because I you've brought some at my environment day you show up with designs and for the 401 Young Street to get bicycles through that that area I've, I've done a number of design proposal which is, I is that your expertise city. or do you have um, background some, some some of them like the double basket like the city proposed a 50 million dollar uh, flyover ramp for southbound young to east, eastbound 401 I I proposed for the same cost so we could get a, a double basket weave crossover which basically cost the same 50 okay. million dollars and it makes all uh, for on ramp and all for off ramp free floor. Okay, okay, okay. I, I was just taken aback because I thought um, I, I've always known you to be a pr pro cycling uh, well, advocate. I, I am pro cycling. I know you are. But, yeah, but I, I just... believe that it's a much safer solution along the west side of B Cross. Okay, no, that's fine. That's helpful input. You live in the area. That's great. Angela Marley, thank you very thank much. You. Raymond, Angela Marley is next. Welcome. Thank you. Your, is your mic on there? I think so. It's okay, good. On. You can, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Good. I had a PowerPoint presentation to uh, give to you, but I uh, don't have a computer, therefore I will, uh, because I wanted to bring you pictures. I first of all need to tell you that I am a member of the advisory committee, TTC advisory committee on accessible transit. I tell you that to explain my knowledge of transit issues. I live in the area. I have received notices regarding the meetings and have attended the meetings. I'm asking you to reimagine an accessible Young Street. At these meetings, I raised concerns regarding the accessibility to, the, in particular, the North York Centre subway station. And in the staff report, there is zero mention of any type of uh, accessibility issues at all in the Young Street project. Given that Ontario is going to be fully accessible by 2025 is the plan, uh, this is not forward thinking. The, um, I am, have pictures which I'll uh, pass on with. I'm in particular raising concern regarding North York Centre, but this committee needs to be, to be aware that this issue applies to other stations as well. The TTC is doing its part to uh, make the system accessible through its vehicles as well as the stations. The uh, Wheel Trans is undergoing major changes 76% of people that use wheel trans are seniors. There's an increasing demand for services. Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act has mandated changes so that as of 2017, they have a revised accessibility uh, for uh, uh, um, eligibility for wheel trans. So this means that there's going to be more people using the accessible uh, transit system. We'll t in your last meeting, you had a presentation about vehicles, automated vehicles making the short trips to take people to transit. Wheel Trans is doing that now and building on doing more of having their uh, customers go with Wheel Trans, the short trips to the subway stations. And therefore, there's going to be more 
traffic at the subway stations, taking the people there, and they continue their trip. So my main point to you is that the TTC and the uh, city need to work together to make the stations um, a level access from the street to the entrance at North York Centre Station. Um, Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, we have one question for you. Councillor Holliday. Thank you for speaking to us. Can you, do you have any concerns about the proposal for a cycle track along Young? Like I, do you have some experience in dealing with wheel trans and cycling infrastructure? Yes. So how does it work? Um, w one of the things that's happening is that the cyclists and the wheel trans uh, cu uh, customers and uh, drivers are competing for the same curb space. What's happening is that the, the, the cycle bike lane is on the street. The Wheeltrans provides door-to-door -door service. Wheeltrans comes along, they deploy the ramp at the street and it's across a bike path because the only way that they have to get access to that door is to stop in front of it. So therefore, uh, one of the pictures that I had to show you is at Queen's Park subway station. On college, there is a bike path and it goes right along uh, the, the, uh, co the college in, in front of the station. So I'm hoping that the, you will have learned from the, the conflicts that are arising, because to me it's a huge safety concern. There's going to be uh, cyclists who are going on these cycle uh, tracks and then the door-to-door -door services people deploying the ramp to try and get out or get in and then conflict uh, with both of them feeling entitled to the space. So just for clarity, so the, that's the real trend stops in front of the cycle infrastructure and they block it? Or do they bring you somewhere else? Like, I, I'm just curious how it works. Well, or is it both? First of all, people that are using wheel trends have mobility issues. And there's going to be some who don't, but mobility issues mean that they're not able to walk a distance or at all. That's why they have door-to-door -door services. And they need to get from the vehicle to the subway station. The way to do that is to be dropped at the door. At the door. So uh, to summarize, I guess uh, so you have concerns about this, like that, that I well, like th there isn't the plan you mentioned. I, here I have concerns that, that, that this committee is not aware of the accessibility issues. Everybody on this committee knows someone who is using some form of assistance to be able to get around. And you think of those people, or, or you may be there at some point in your, your life as well. And we need to be forward thinking because it costs a lot more money to retrofit than it does to incorporate accessibility uh, features into a plan in the first place. Thank you. Um, Councillor Fillion, okay, usually we do, just so we know, we do guests first, so you can go ahead though, go ahead. We Thank usually you. do uh, uh, visiting councillors first. Just on, on um, I understand your point about it needs to be well managed um, so that there's no conflict between the bike lanes and, and people using wheeltrans. Generally speaking, for people who have mobility issues, is it better to have a wider sidewalk or a narrower sidewalk? Well, right now, we're, we're, I'm one of the few people in the room that's probably been up and down the sidewalk between Steeles and Shepherd, and I feel every bump in the road so that a smoother sidewalk is the, the, the best approach. And if you're crossing Young Street with mobility issues, would you rather be crossing <laughs> six lanes or four lanes, which feels safer to you? I think that's a loaded question because it, well, it, 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 it depends. <laughs> Well, it depends on how long the, the crossing um, lights are now in order for you to cross. I have been hit by a tow truck on Young Street crossing on a green light in the daylight. So, you know, there, there isn't any uh, sure, sure uh, fit, safe way 
uh, to do it. The, the, the main issue is that we have to not set up uh, conflict areas from the beginning. Right, thank you. Um, I've struggled with this issue the whole term, and um, I've never really been able, like Councillor Holliday, to quite figure it out. So are you saying, uh, like our, our former, the former speaker, Raymond, that there's conflict, there's conflict points there could be conflict points with the bike lanes and folks using accessibility, um, wheel trans, et cetera. There are conflict points. It exists now. Um, one of the addresses, I think it's 341 Bloor Street West, is right at a uh, uh, area where there is a building with, with a lot of uh, people who are using mobility devices and the bike lane is right in front of it. And so the, what is the impact uh, to uh, people in the accessibility community who have mobility issues and challenges? What is the impact of that? The, inf the, the impact is that th they're trying to move the, the place where the person can get to the wheel trans. They're trying to move it uh, to the end of the block or to another location, which means it's a further distance for the person to be able to, to walk. Uh, as it is, I live two blocks away from Young Street, and before I was using this wheelchair, I could not use the subway because I couldn't walk the two blocks to go there. Once I, I was... Uh, using the wheelchair, I was able to wheel around and, and fully use the transit system. I came here on the subway today. However, when I was using a rollator, which is like a walker, it was too far and therefore too exhausting to be able to walk that distance. So although it's nothing for a cyclist to, to cycle two blocks to go to Beecroft or whatever and cycle that distance, it means the difference between using a system independently or not going at all for people who are not able to walk that distance. Okay. That's, that's why wheel trans has door to door service. Okay, that's very helpful because that's been a, we struggled with that this, as I said, this for the last couple of years. Thank you very much. I don't see any other questions for you. We're going to move on to our next speaker, which is Jeff Olanhen. I think I've got that right, but maybe not. Uh, he's with Young Hearts Child Care Centre. And then Jane uh, Brackley, you're next, and then Sam after that. Good morning. Welcome. To how, maybe you can repeat your last name. It's Ola Han. Okay, that's much better and a better job than I did. All right, go ahead. You've got three minutes. Yeah, thank you very much, and thank you for uh, having this meeting and carrying it over, because uh, it would have been devastating not to, to talk last time. Um, so I'm here on behalf of Young Hearts, and uh, also... Uh, and we're just hearing from the clerk that you do need to speak into the mic. This mic here. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So I'm here on behalf of uh, Young Hearts as well as uh, my family. I work with my family in the real estate business at Young and Avondale. I live at Beecroft and Churchill, and my kids go to school at uh, Young Hearts and uh, Catholic French Immersion School on Kempford, on the corner of Kempford and Beecroft. So I'm up and down Beecroft and Young Street on a daily basis. Uh, just to speak to Young Hearts, uh, it's a not for profit uh, daycare serving 114 kids. Uh, uh, I'm the president of uh, Volunteer Board, and uh, we discussed it at a board meeting and moved a motion for me to come here and just, in the current plan, the current way that Reimagine Young is being presented, we don't support it. Um, I detailed this in my letter of January 18th, and to build off of the last two speakers, um, the plan basically eliminates uh, um, a lane off of Young Street, puts the bikes there instead, and leaves no space for drop-off, like a guy in an Uber to get out, um, parking. It, and also, it doesn't even leave space for right turn movement. So uh, Young and Shepherd and Young and Finch have become extremely busy pedestrian places. And as a result, if car people are walking at all these points here, we will lose, we will be down to one lane in that direction on Young Street because a person will be stopped on Young Street waiting to turn right and they'll be forced to go around. So the current plan doesn't, even if I could get down to maybe four lanes of traffic, there's no 
there's no sort of lay-by lanes, there's no turning lanes, there's, there's, uh, there's none of that stuff. stuff. So I just find it very interesting that at the last meeting, we had members uh, from the community, uh, North York come, uh, and they were representing local ratepayer groups, but they only came and provided their own personal support. They didn't provide the support of the, of the group they were rating, saving except for Raymond, uh, who, uh, no, no traffic study has been released for this uh, project. I've been in touch with uh, Jeffrey Day as recent as yesterday, trying to get a full study, traffic study for the project, and um, it's, it still has not been released. So we're doing this big study, and to build off the last person of the final speaker last time, who was uh, representing the area north of Finch, east of Young, they haven't studied it as a whole. They haven't sort of worked through uh, all the connection points and all that stuff. And I gave a whole bunch of those suggestions in an email in October, sort of talking about maybe we should consider this, maybe we should consider that, maybe we should consider all of these different points and stuff. And Anyway, I'm Okay, your time's time. up. I think we have a question for you. Councillor Holliday, do you have a question? No? Any other? I have a question if nobody else does. Um, so you're with Young Hearts, I remember years, when I, I used to work in North York. So you've been around for decades, is that right? Correct. Young Hearts started on Shepherd. It's in a city-owned uh, facility. Uh, so we pay rent to the city of Toronto. Uh, and we're at Young and Park Home. Okay, so you're be here on behalf of both the the center as well as yourself as a family in the Correct. neighborhood? Correct. And your position is you don't support it the on current, Street? The current plan as presented, um, uh, we don't support. Uh, I think it's fantastic to put bikes um, somewhere up there. I have three little girls that are three, five, and seven. I would never, ever, ever drive my kids. And, my, and so one goes in a wagon and the two are biking now and I would never put them on a curb lane on Young Street. They fall over, they're in a, it's just, it's, Raymond's idea of a, a bike lane in a safe spot is what we need. We want, we, it's a, it's a family neighborhood and it's, it's, yeah, at some point, a biker turns to a pedestrian. And to build off the last point of the last speaker, they, uh, um, the biker is very fit and agile and they could walk the, I don't know, 100 feet, 150 feet from Beecroft to Young, and I'd much rather have the space for pedestrians, and I'd much rather have the, the bikes in a safe spot for my family to use. Okay, that's, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, and thanks again. And thanks for, for coming back. Not we really uh, appreciate everybody. Listening to the local council and moving the motion to, to just push it to council. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, uh, thank to, thanks to everybody who came back. Jane Brackley is next. Then Sam, there you are. All right, welcome. Hello, Hello. can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm a resident of the area. Um, I live at Young and Shepherd, and I, uh, I experience uh, daily the dysfunctional streetscape and the dysfunctional pedestrian environment. I, I cycle, I walk, I take transit, and I drive. So I have experience all through there. Um, I've also been ra I was raised in North York, and I worked for years out of the Madison Center, which is just in that, in that area. Of there, so. um, and uh, I believe that uh, I support the staff recommendation for Transform Young Street. Um, I think it will add to the uh, to the pedestrian environment and to the uh, city, the life of the city in this area, um, and uh, I don't think it's fair that our neighborhood should suffer um, because of the congestion that's largely due to the uh, to the to the four, having the 401 cutting through uh, cutting through the area. Um, also, like to say that uh, this area is seeing a huge population expansion. Um, there are more families with young children. Um, living in the area, um, they, those households need a safe and welcoming environment with public space that meets their needs. Um, there are more and more seniors that are aging in place um, that also require a pedestrian environment that is uh, welcoming and pleasant and provides opportunity for interaction on the street um, and that minimizes hazards for those with mobility issues or uh, 
Um, and more and more households in the area are comprised of millennials and younger people um, who don't see benefit in owning cars, um, given the cost of operating, maintaining, and insuring them. Um, I'm the parent of one, and I uh, have to say that uh, neither he or any of his friends have any interest in, uh, in owning a car. Um, there was a deputant at the last meeting which I was at who made a statement about uh, traffic congestion and likened it to uh, cardiac, a cardiac condition, clogging of arteries. Um, for those of us who have some personal experience with cardiac disease, the solution is not to, is the solution to, to congestion and uh, uh, clogged of arteries is to change your diet. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think we need to uh, think differently about our streets. Um, okay. Sure. Um, I think designing our cityscapes around the assumption that cars will be as ubiquitous in the future as they were, as they have been to date, is uh, a mistake. Um, I think the city of the future will be making more use of alternatives to cars, uh, ride sharing, Uber, Lyft, uh, all of those kinds of options will be more and more, um, will be used more and more. And what we're doing today is going to last us for decades and we need to think about the future and not just the current situation. I just heard Uber and blew my, made me upset a little bit. Um, my name is Sam, uh, Sam Moini. I'm the president of the Toronto Taxi Fleet Operator Association and also the spokesperson for the Toronto Taxi Alliance. Um, first of all, I would like to say, though they support my position on this, I'm speaking as a resident of Willowdale. I would like to thank the staff for their work on this report. Um, when I first noticed this project was being considered, I had to ensure I attended the consultations that were offered. As a resident of Willowdale, I decided to receive some feedback on this project proposal and seek opinions from my fellow neighbors, residents, and businesses to see what they thought the, of, the, of this project. It was not completely surprising to hear that there were serious concerns. For anyone who has traveled up Young Street north of the 401 knows that the word congestion would not do justice to what occurs there daily on that stretch of road. An aerial view of the area would reflect more of a parking lot than a road especially in peak rush hours. Reducing lanes in this area would seem illogical by any standards. The residents of Willowdale's, the residents of Willowdale have to be considered. People here rely on their vehicles heavily to take their kids to school, daycare, and commute to work as their daily routine. By altering Young Street down to two lanes each way it would almost make, the, make it impossible for them to do that. The issue is that we are not a downtown Toronto, we are not downtown Toronto and we are still located in some ways in the suburbs with people pr predominantly using vehicles to commute in their daily lives. Now I know some will argue that people need to get out of their cars and use other methods of travel uh, such as transit. That being said, what benefit would transit us users have with this proposal? Perhaps none. They will be stuck in the same parking lot that drivers will be stuck in. Wildill is bordered by the busiest highway not only in Toronto, not only in Ontario, but in Canada. We have to, we have, we, have we considered the backlog this will cause as one of its major exits will be reduced to two lanes each way? How many thousands of commuters will be affected? Finally, the business owners that have expressed serious concerns with this project with me personally. Eliminating parking, eliminating parking reducing lanes. How will this affect their business? We have many projects in the city we are learning from today, such as the King Street Parlor project, and we are seeing challenges that they are facing today with many of, their, many of the new rules, including eliminating parking and seeing reduced traffic flow from consumers. I think everyone sees that bike, lanes, bike, lake, bike lane infrastructure is important and, important, and options such as one on, the, on Beecroft would be much more ideal for Willowdale, making it safer for cyclists while allowing Young Street to stay vibrant. I had concerns personally with the cost of the, with Beecroft, but I've been told by s some of the city staff and also the mayor's office that they have considered that issue. 
We must not jump the gun and allow this project to be the pet project of a few and decide to make drastic changes to a community without realizing what the true effects are. Let's revitalize Young Street, not make it a war on the residents and businesses of Willowdale. Thank you. came back as well. Daniel, you're next. No, Daniel's not here. Okay, we're going to move on to Jesse James. Did you hear me? I was waiting for you to officially Sorry. tell me I'm not speaking. Sorry? I'm waiting for you to officially Oh, Patricia Starr. So, I'm not speaking. Is that right? I'm not letting yeah, that is. Well, according to the motions that were moved and approved by uh, committee this morning, you are not speaking. That's okay. correct. I just wanted to publicly apologize to you for my criticism of your last meeting. I was wrong to do it. And I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to speak today, but... Well, we're sorry, too. We're sorry, too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, Jesse, who who we got two people? Are you three minutes or are you six? It's uh, three minutes. He's just here supporting me. Oh, support team. Yep. All right, go ahead, Jesse. Thank you for inviting people to share their thoughts and ideas about important conversations and projects in Toronto. My name is Jesse James, and this is my friend Peter DeConing. Transform Young is not really about bike lanes. Transform Young is about fostering a healthy and connected neighbourhood in Willowdale. Building a healthy city requires healthy neighbourhoods. We boost the macrocosm by nurturing the microcosm. I live in Willowdale, I work in Willowdale, I study in Willowdale, my local faith community is in Willowdale, my wife and I have been in Willowdale for 13 years. She works at Empress and Young. Both of our children were born in the neighbourhood and both are learning to ride bikes even as they are four and two years old. We gave up our car over three and a half years ago and now either cycle or walk or take transit or do car share. I share this so that an immediately different tone might be established as I contribute to what you've already heard from experts and advocates who are uniquely qualified to share their well-informed belief that Transform Young is not only a good option for Young Street between Shepherd and Finch, but is quite seriously the best and only option. I also have it from the board of the West Lansing Homeowners Association that Raymond Jean actually does not speak on their behalf, um, but is an individual on, from, uh, who's never been officially accepted on the board who is speaking his own opinion. Uh, have that from the board themselves. I'm As not sure that's really appropriate. Well, you you clarify. You asked him to clarify if you. I did. On yes. Half of the board and the board actually. Well, unless you have some type of proof, I don't know if you can make a statement like that. So I I, I'd can, ask you to withdraw it. that until you can have some type of. He's so, he's holding up a certification. So I, I think you, I'd ask you to withdraw that comment. I withdraw that comment then. Thank you. As a family, we find that Young Street is a destination to go to. We visit almost daily the North York Central Library, Starbucks, the movie theater, the Central Center for Performing Arts, lots of restaurants, pet shops, etc. But we often struggle with Young Street's feel as a highway. Over the last 13 years, the Young Finch intersection has regularly had one of the highest numbers of pedestrian and vehicle collisions resulting in serious injury, hospitalization, or death. Just at the end of last January, a woman was hit at Young and Finch, sent to the hospital. And then Monday night, when I was preparing some remarks for a collaboration when we released a letter to you, um, Madam Robinson, and to uh, Mayor John Tory, um, I was sitting at a pub at Young and Finch and another person was hit there while I was sitting there preparing these remarks. Last night I attended the Friends and Families for Safe Streets Vigil at Mel Aspen Square for the 12 people who have died on the streets of Toronto um, due to vehicular collisions, including a little boy in a parking lot. 12 people. My wife and I regularly feel threatened as we bike or walk either on our own or with our kids when we are near to Young Street, but we're committed to being a part of the neighborhood. This should not be. With over 52,000 children and youth Wrap living up, in Willowdale, and a large proportion of them either living within a five minute walk of Young, of Young Street or regularly traveling there on their bikes or by walking, this important stretch of Toronto's most iconic street must be reimagined, if not for aesthetic reasons, then for the safety of our children and youth. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Jesse? Uh, Councillor Fillion, go ahead. Uh, you were sort of interrupted there. Is there anything you'd like to add to wrap up? Sure. <clears throat> There's 2,000 students at the TDSB school. Um, Earl Hag is the largest high school in the city. They regularly go to Young Street and, and visit the, <clears throat> the various shops every single day during lunch. They go to Young Street for food, to study, or to hang out with friends. The insufficient road crossings plus aggressive highway style driving on Young Street makes for very dangerous situations for these high school students. Our work, you're going to hear from some youth as well, who a voice that you typically have not been able to hear from um, regarding this project, who will also speak on behalf of the hundreds of, of children that they have trained to ride bikes. So together, Peter and I are representing a group of people 
who believe that this is the best option. And as a resident in Willowdale, we believe that this is the best option for transforming, to transform young for the entire community. Thank you. Any questions? I don't see any uh, other than that. So thank you very much. Uh, and on to Jared Boutin. Okay, so I, I'm gonna recommend that Jared, the, so we've got three, three people speaking from Willowdale Young People for bike lanes on Young. If those three would come forward together, I think that would make, make the most sense. So uh, we've got Jared, we've got Joel and Jolene. Welcome, and we'll give you nine minutes. <coughs> Go ahead. Thank you for letting me share this morning. My name is Gerard and I live in Willowdale. Sure. With me this morning are my friends Joel and Jolene, who are sharing the short deputation with me. Before I started in my second year of college in 2014, I started a program in Willowdale called the Learn to Ride Bike Camp. We began with two weeks of camp teaching local kids how to ride bikes. Almost every day we went out on local bike trips around the neighborhood. On these trips, we often crossed Young Street to get to Earl Bills, North York Cemetery, McDonald's, and other local hotspots and trail systems. The scariest part of every field trip was crossing Young Street. Taking kids anywhere close to Young Street was frightening. But it's important to teach kids how to ride bikes and be a part of the community. And this is what we were doing with the Learn to Ride Bike Camp, teaching kids how to ride their bikes and have fun in their neighborhood. My love of bikes and helping kids learn how to ride bikes does not mean that I am against cars. I work in the automotive industry. My college diploma is in automotive and power technician, and I currently work as an apprentice mechanic. So I know cars, I love cars, I own cars, I race cars. But on Young Street, there's 14 north-south car lanes between Beecroft and Doris, and there's no way, safe way for cyclists to travel. Parking would be taken away from motorists in favor of cyclists, who I believe are more likely to stop and step into a shop considering they wouldn't have to find or pay for parking. There's also rush hour where bikes would almost certainly be quicker than motorists. I've lived in Willowdale since I was seven, and I also know that Young Street is not the best way to get to the 401 or move throughout the neighborhood. I feel like a perfect Willowdale is one where a 12-year-old can bike to school, see his friends, shop for snacks without anybody worrying about their safety. Unfortunately, in the society we live in, driving is almost a natural step to growing up. And that's why there's so much congestion and why we need to have this conversation. A Young Street bike lane is more than removing parking and adding, it's adding freedom to our youth and younger generation. It gives cyclists more freedom and easier access to hotspots and more safety. We need to blur the lines where you need your first car and we do that by making it more accessible on two wheels and a set of pedals so we don't need 14 lanes. I feel like this proposition to transform Young is the first step towards reducing greenhouse gas gases and realizing my perfect North York. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite my friends, Joel and Jolene. Uh, hello and good morning. Thank you guys for uh, listening to our voices. Uh, the three of us are representing the young people in Willowdale who also believe the importance of transforming Young Street. Uh, we are not experts in city planning or experts on... Oh, is my mic not on? Okay. Uh, we are not experts in city planning or how to direct traffic or even experts on bikes. We are experts in riding bikes in Willowdale. You know, we teach kids how to ride bikes. And we think it's important to be in a community in an environment where it's safe for everybody to travel by car, bike, bus, or even walking. Uh, we believe that Young Street uh, needs to be transformed. Uh, Young Street needs to be transformed because we teach dozens of kids and, and youth to ride bikes. Um, Gerard and I taught our, in the first Learn to Ride camp, and we would take kids to near Young Street or beside Young Street, and every time you would go there, it's, it's scary. It's a stressful feeling. Yeah, uh, we plan the safest route ever, like the, the, the safest, the minimum risk possible. But the, when it comes to Young Street um, and how many cars there are and how fast they're going, there's a huge risk to, um, to cross Young Street. And, but like we have to cross it like either way. And the kids need to learn uh, how to ride bikes safely in our neighborhood because they're going to ride it either way with, um, if we're training them or not. But, to, but the option to transform young is, is bear, bigger than just bikes. Every summer we take our kids to places like Bayview Bike Park or Wendy's or McDonald's. You know, these are the places where people gather in community and these are the places that 
children want to go to? And all of these places are, are right next to or, or, or at Young Street. Uh, to transform Young Street is to make it not only a place for adults to commute back and forth to work. To transform Young Street, it's to make it a place where everyone can be together, children um, and adults, uh, new bike a rider or cars. To simply put it, to transform Young is to make it a safer place for everybody. Thank you. Good work. Okay. Uh, any questions? I see none. So we're going to move to our next speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Che Kim. But I also just want to note, as you saw with Patricia Starr, she spoke last time. Committee has moved a motion that there, and I think Councillor Holliday mentioned this at the end of the last meeting. Uh, there'll be no repeat speakers. So I see at the end of the, near the end of the list, Brett McDermott, if you are here, unfortunately you won't be able to speak, similar to Patricia Starr, and then Lord Down, Michael Euford. If you are here, unfortunately, you won't be able to speak. Also, did I get that right? And then also uh, the clerk is pointing out to me at the bottom of uh, the green page, Stacy, I don't know. Stacy at the bottom of the page, if you're here, Stacy, you won't be able to speak because you spoke at the last meeting. Che, uh, you can go ahead. Welcome. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm a Korean. Uh, I, uh, I have a two restaurants in this project. First one, I set up the uh, Korean fusion bar at Young and Shepherd and set three years before. Uh, second one, you know, I really had a good business three years before. Then I decided to have a big investment uh, on Young and Finch uh, for second restaurant as a Japanese uh, udon and sake bar. So I want, because for last 12 years after moving to Canada, so I spent every single day in North York. So then I can ask you, look at the street on the evening time, who are the major street people on, in this uh, street? You can see all Asian young crowd. Why they are coming to this uh, street? From Fishwood to Finch, uh, I have a lot of uh, Korean restaurant owners owns a Korean restaurant and Japanese food and some cafeteria and all that kind of things. Most of my friends, they want to come here, but they can't. We are working for 15 hours per day, nonstop, seven days. So most of them, we cannot speak Korean, we cannot speak English. So when we get the information on paper, it looks amazing. It was, I said, wow, it's great. But when I take a look at the old details, so I decided to see what is going on. And I went to, I, I participated on the uh, meeting for small business uh, group. So I was the only one person who participated on the meeting because all other uh, restaurant owners, they don't know what is going on. So my point, what is the character of North York? So because we have a, a Greek town, we have a little Italian town, and what would right now is not finalized, what is the character of North York? Why young crowd? Because Young and Shepherd is completely different from Young, young and Finch. Young and Shepherd, young crowd of Oriental people, that is mostly 1.5 generation or the second generation. But Young and Finch is just a newcomers. And so the, it's completely different. So why they are coming to this street? Why they want to rent the space in this region? Very hard to find out, empty space. Why? Because they love our food. They, can, they don't want to cook. You, you know, young people. So they wanna. So they they love to eat outside. We are offering very qualified, good food with a good price. That's you know. For last three years, most of retail business on ground floor has been changed to restaurant and dessert house because you know. Uh, and we are attracting as a core part of North York, We have to attract outside of North York people to see the friend, to have a birthday party, that kind of things. But nowadays, we are very seriously st struggling on parking space. Oh, sorry, you have to yeah. Um, Sir Lee. 
So you say that many people cannot come to a meeting. Do they have concerns about this proposal, or is it uh, something they will uh, you know, they accept that uh, to narrow Yang Street down to two lanes each way? Uh, I don't think because it, to narrow down from six lanes to, to four lanes, 715 parking lot will be gone. So then you offered 175 extra. Uh, parking space on Beecroft and Doris, then, you know, I don't think customer can park the street, park the car on Beecroft, and then pick up the fo food on the Young Street. So it, I mean, the, this, I object to this project because it can cause big damages on small business. But the staff report also says that uh, most people parking have uh, parking on the side, side street. street. Yeah. yeah, side street is already full. So I'm taking a look every day. Side street, uh, paid or unpaid, is already full. There is no extra space on side the street. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. We're going to move to John Cole, who is the president of the Korean Canadian Business Association of North Toronto. And then after John, we have Murray Stewart and Rebecca Goodwin. So if you can be prepared to come forward. Welcome. You have three minutes. Go ahead, John. Hi, uh, my name is John Ko. I'm the president of Korean Canadian Business Association of North Toronto, which represents over 100 Korean businesses. Many of our members own a small business between Fincher and Shepherd on Young Street. Over 10% of the population of Willowdale is of a Korean heritage. So we have formed our own small Korean town along this line, and it's getting bigger and becoming more popular especially after uh, Pyeongchang Olympic Winter Games in Korea. Uh -huh. Okay. We yeah, are, that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> but we're very concerned about the high levels of traffic congestion and limited parking space, and that our unique, our unique neighborhood will be driven out. There's anxiety from Korean business owners that the project does not include additional and accessible parking throughout the year. We would feel more supportive of the reimagining young project if it included plans of a structured building for public parking along Young Street. An example to emulate is the, uh, the shops at Don Mills, which is becoming a more popular destination to shop and dine. One of the reason is the parking is always available through a multi-story parking garage. The Korean Canadian Business Association is open to working with the city to maintain what makes this area unique by increasing the dialogue with the business owners and city planners to ensure the project benefits everyone. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Master Ko, I think we, we've yes, spoken yes, about this, back. and I um, hear your concerns about, and the previous speaker, making sure that there is sufficient parking. Right. But apart from that, would I be correct that the businesses would welcome the opportunity to have a wider sidewalk with um, and to be able to have outdoor patio space, that that is something that would be good for the businesses. In the, in the future, yes, eventually. We actually, we like the idea in the future after the construction, but what we're concerned about the duration of the construction time. Sure, so Two years. as we, we talked, you're concerned yes. about construction and minimizing that. Um, and you're concerned about the availability of parking for the businesses. It's in addition, uh, for example, as Young and Shepherd, Southwest, I guess across from Whole Food, there's only ground parking, and one block north of uh, Melasman Square, that's ground parking, and the southwest side of Young and Finch, there's all ground parking, but the, unfortunately there's no multi-level parking spots in such a beautiful right. traffic no, area. Then, so if we, we get something work out, we'll be glad to uh, Sure, but the, the notion of improving the public realm and having room for outdoor patios, that is something, that's a component of Like I said, once it's done, like. it would be nice, but yes. you've got to have to have a certain plan. Just like Yorkdale a Mall, they're yes. building a parking spot before they're extending shops. Right. Right? I think it was very important, for, especially for Korean business owners, do you have some backup plan before we go ahead and do uh, your plan? Right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here this, this morning to give you input for your reconsideration on re-regiting Young Street. I fully endorse and support the Transform Young tra recommendation. I've been a resident of this area for over 20 years and currently own a residence on Ellerslie Avenue, one block west of Beecroft, right beside the area we're considering. I have participated in all the public consultation meetings on reimagining Young Street and actually presented to this committee last May 9th. These consultations included five public drop-in events in 2016 and 17, and also an additional community meeting in the council chambers. I have witnessed the growth and prosperity of this area of Toronto, realizing it goes back as North York, Willowdale, and even Lansing. 20 years ago, it was a truly a path to, on a path to becoming an amazing and vibrant center for working, living, and playing, and was a destination for visitors. I recall the exciting opening of the North York Center of the Performing Arts, starting with Showboat. This brought busloads of visitors from Buffalo, Detroit, and beyond to enjoy our community and amenities. Unfortunately, this dynamic community growth track has not progressed as anticipated, and as certainly I expected. We now have the opportunity to achieve the dream of making this area a truly dynamic, world-class community for our residents, workers, and again, be a destination for visitors far and wide. Let me this morning just address one very specific item for your consideration. This is the four versus six lanes on Young Street. I believe the Transform Young option addresses the vehicle needs of people who just, wants to commute, who just want to commute through our area, those who see us only as a transportation corridor. I recognize the dichotomy of conflicting objectives, community versus corridor, but I believe we have found an excellent solution that includes reducing Young from six to four lanes in the reimagining Young Street stretch. This is made possible as a result of the completed enhancements of Doris Avenue and Beecroft Road, the streets immediately east and west running parallel to Young. This has created a ring road on both sides of Young Street. Putting this into perspective, we're not talking about taking Young from six to four lanes. We're actually talking about taking this corridor from current 14 to 12 lanes, when we properly include the work already done that includes four traffic lanes in each direction on Beecroft and Doris. Surely 12 lanes of traffic through Willowdale, North York is more than enough to satisfy everybody. This is even more logical when you also recognize that Young Street is just six lanes north of Young, of the area we're considering, and six lanes south of this area. Again, 12 lanes is certainly enough. This will result in giving us the vibrant and exciting centre for our community we all want. I look forward to your decision to support Transform Young. I'd be pleased to answer any questions or talk about any of the other issues on the whole Transform Young as well. It's just a any questions? Okay, thank you, Murray. Uh, Rebecca Goodwin. Member Steering Committee, Walk Toronto. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to address the committee. I've been here before, including um, previously on this matter. Uh, I am also a resident in Councillor Robinson's ward. I live steps from Young Street, um, just north of Lawrence. I frequent the whole area of Young Street from Eglinton all the way up to Finch. Um, so I am here in my capacity as a member of Walk Toronto, but also as a user of the Young Street Corridor. Um, I also want to mention that I'm a mother of a 20-year-old who um, just days ago was hit by a car. So that's a new hat that I wear in my um, involvement with Walk Toronto. So it makes um, the importance of being here all that much more important. I want to pick up first on the point that was made by the previous speaker about the looking at the bigger picture and taking into account the original intentions that were um, in mind for um, Doris and Beecroft, which was to be part of a solution for moving traffic through the Willowdale area. So I strongly support the comments that were made about the need to look at this as a reduction of 14 lanes of through traffic to 12, rather than making it an issue of six versus four and um, bike lanes versus cars. I want to refer to um, a couple of paragraphs in the written submission that Walk Toronto made um, and presented to this committee in advance of the first meeting. Um, and that is to draw attention to um, Toronto's commitment to Vision Zero, uh, through its road safety plan. Adopting the Transform Young option will be consistent with Vision Zero's objectives and its inclusion of Young Street as a priority for safety improvements. 
The study highlighted that um, Young Street from Shepherd Avenue to Steeles was one of 14 locations identified um, as being important to be audited in terms of road, saf road safety and addressed due to the high number of collisions that have resulted in people being killed or seriously injured. And other speakers have spoken eloquently on this topic. Uh, I would also like to point out that adopting the Transform Young option uh, is consistent with the city's policy on complete streets. Uh, and a further point to emphasize is that the uh, options of Transform Young versus the Enhanced Young Transform Beecroft option um, are the differences are neg negligible in terms of how it will impact traffic con congestion. Um, on the other hand, the uh, Beecroft option is $20 million more than the Transform Young option. And I'm not sure how the city could justify an expenditure of $20 million without a good rationale, which to date has not been okay, provided. Thank you. Is there any questions? Councillor Fillion? Did you have anything you wanted to add in summary? Um, in summary, I would like to um, just urge the council and the committee to act in accordance with its own policies and um, commitments, most namely Vision Zero, but also Complete Streets. Thank you. Okay, David Sison is next. He's the executive uh, with Toronto <laughs> Society of Architects. Welcome, David. I'm not David. Oh, is he not here? Um, no, we requested a name change, and we were under the impression that that was... Oh, that's okay. So if you could just share, us, yes. uh, share yeah. your name with us. Sure. Um, my name's Maria Denegri. I am actually the chair of the Toronto Society of Architects. Okay. And um, you've signed in with clerks? Yes. Or will. Okay, welcome. Go ahead. Thank you. So, I'm Maria Denegri. I'm an architect and a professor. I have a practice in Toronto. I teach at the University of Toronto. Um, in the architecture school, and I'm the current chair of the Toronto Society of Architects. The TSA was established in 1887. It's the local chapter of the Ontario Association of Architects with a membership of approximately 1,200 architects. Its executive is comprised of leaders in our profession that bring to the table a range of expertise, emerging talent, and over 50 years of experience. The TSA also has a long tradition of playing an advocacy role in the city, ensuring that architecture and urban design are key considerations in public discussions and in processes like these, like this one here today, that have an impact on our built environment. It is with this mandate that I stand here, or I guess I sit here, before you as a representative of our membership in support of option one. It is also worth noting at this time that our position and support of option one is also shared by the OAA, our parent organization. The um, president of the OAA, John Stevenson, has, I believe, is issued a letter in support. This is the only chance we have to get this right. As members of the Toronto Design Review Panel stated in their recent review of the initiative while clearly supporting option one, the choice is nothing less than a referendum on what kind of city we want to build in the future. We strongly support the City of Toronto Transportation Services endorsement of option one. It is the only option that recognizes Young Street has the potential to be a vibrant urban place, a focus for the dense mixed-use community, as opposed to the recreation of six-lane roadway dividing the community. This Transportation Services report identifies, among others, the following issues where option one far outperforms option two. These have been expressed already by many of the speakers here today. One key is, uh, factor is money. The pr preliminary capital costs estimated for option one is 51.1 million. Preliminary capital costs um, estimate for option two is 71 million. Furthermore, looking forward, option one will encourage high quality employment opportunities by creating a civic realm with wider sidewalks and extensive tree planting that gives opportunities for restaurants, patios, and outdoor cafes, the types of places that currently make the downtown such a desirable place to live and work and play. Option two, by maintaining the six lane roadway, prevents the creation of these necessary to community amenities. Time, option one has estimated construction time of two years, while option two, will extend construction time up to four years, impacting transportation operations over a longer period and delaying the introduction of cycling routes. Movement. 
Option one focuses on providing multinodal um, modal tra travel for transit users, pedestrians, cyclists, up. and motor vehicle drivers, whereas option two focuses on the movement of motor vehicles. I will wrap up. In summary, North York Centre is a vibrant and very dense mixed-use community, currently split by six-lane six roadway, whose use during rush hour is primarily 74% by, by vehicles originating in New York region. Option one would serve to enhance, increase, and beautify the public realm while providing multinodal transportation options. It offers improved safety, health, economic, and environmental outcomes. The Transform Young option is about making a complete street with a sense of place rather than recreating right. a six-lane roadway. To, I, I'm sorry I have to cut you off, but we have a question for you, Councillor Holliday. Oh, um, Councillor Fillion should go first, and then Councillor Holliday, um, go ahead. You, you made a statement that really caught my ear. You said this is a referendum on the type of city we want to build for the future. Could you just elaborate a little bit on that? Um, option one is, uh, is, we believe, strongly the only option that would actually be consistent with um, current legislation or mandates such as complete streets. This is really not just about cycling lanes, but it is about creating a kind of environment and a street for everyone to use. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for speaking to us. Um, so you're from the Toronto Society of Architects. You're an architect yourself. Yes. Does the society or even yourself have a position on, um, and I know you're trained for this and you understand this, uh, about the integrity of a network of, of transportation? So I don't know if anyone could, could argue or, or speak against that there's a lot of pressure put on this corridor today by, by automobile or vehicular traffic, whether it's commuters or deliveries or movement of goods, whatever it is. How, um, how would you approach a, the pressures put on a system that needs to move people from region to region? How do we resolve that? Where do the vehicles go if we constrain it? It's a sort of multi-level um, multi part question here. Um, I think that, that one of the key um, characteristics of a system is that it encompasses or addresses a variety of transport options. Um, I think that the, a fair bit of the debate and, um, today has kind of focused on the reduction of vehicular lanes. Um, I think improvements to transit systems, improvements to um, other options of transportation would all be, will all work coherently and to collectively to actually address the topic of a network. Um, furthermore, I also feel that there's been some very good points made here today about potential conflicts, let's say, with the wheel trans and cyclists with the need to make sure that we maintain right um, turning lanes, with the issue of um, parking. Um, option one at least puts on the table the possibility of actually having this as a dialogue. I think option two, in just a sheer, by simply maintaining a six lane highway, sort of eliminates that discussion. So you raised the point in your, your, your answer uh, that you know, taking pressure off the system through other modes, transit and so be it. But that's not before us right now. Like we don't, we, there's no plan, there's no money, there's no promise of anything to reduce the pressure on the city. So the fear is, is that, you know, if you bottleneck a point by reducing lanes, those vehicles need to go somewhere else, put pressure somewhere else, and that then manifests in other problems. Like they, the cars just don't go away. They, do, do you have any thoughts? They, we don't have that, if we had all the money in the world, absolutely. You know, we can change those modes, but the reality is we don't. Right. Any, any thoughts on that? I think th there has been some model studies done that where um, the, trans the um, transportation services has identified that I think tr traffic um, congestion would only be increased by approximately a minute. Um, the other also is that I, one cannot deny that we are undergoing a kind of profound change in auto infrastructure, car sharing, um, you know, a sort of, and as well, there's a decline in vehicle use um, and vehicle ownership. Um, these will, over time, decrease the demand and, and impact on our road network. 
Uh, we're going to move on to now Janet Love, Andrew Simon, and Hamish Wilson. So Janet's first, and if the other two could be ready for their turn. Uh, welcome, Janet. You've got three minutes. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak today. I, I come here as, as a person that lives in North York. Um, I'm only steps from Young Street. I've moved into North York uh, when I was two years old, and that was in 1954, and I've stayed here ever since. I've seen many changes, the subway being one of the major changes coming up our way. And uh, now I'm having difficulty walking. I'm I tire very easily, and I have to, I had to give up my car, and I chose to give up my car because of the environment. So I thought, okay, why do you do this in the winter? <laughs> so now I think I'm walking everywhere or taking the TTC, but there isn't places to sit. There isn't places to rest. There isn't trees and comfort and, and baby strollers and bikes that make it pleasant to be on Young Street. It's very noisy, it's very smelly, it's very, uh, it's dangerous. I have to, when the light changes on my side of Young Street and I have to cross to do shopping or go to my, my church, there's seven lanes I have to cross, one being a left turn lane. And I take two steps onto the street and the light starts flashing. And it is a terror that the person that's going to go right is going to see a green light without seeing me crossing and is gonna hit me. So that is a fear. In the evenings, if I'm out at night, I wear a, um, a safety jacket so that cars will see me because it's a very big fear. Walking on sidewalks that are like potholes like they are in the streets. And I can't look around because I have to walk and make sure I'm not going to get into a rut or fall off the sidewalk. And like I say, winter has brought its own challenges because when the Young Street gets plowed, the sidewalk gets even smaller. And right now, if somebody is walking on unplowed sidewalks, they walk, there's a whole row of people will walk like this, but they don't have the width to get around. So I am definitely in favor of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a question from Councillor Fillion. So just, I, you, I believe you covered this, but just to make it clear, um, as somebody with mobility issues, um, you would find it much more pleasant and safer to have a wider sidewalk. Yes. As somebody with mobility issues, you would find it much safer and more pleasant to cross four lanes of Young Street rather than six. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, there's another question for you. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Phil uh, Holiday. Oh, hello. Right here. Thank you. I just wanted to pick up on the last point. Um, is it your belief, though, that the plan uh, significantly reduces the crossing distance? If you look at the the numbers on the cross section in there, you still have to cross the bicycle infrastructure, which is like a lane. So the crossing distance is you know, maybe this much difference. Um, does that make a world of difference to you? I, and I, I get the public round part about the sidewalk and you know there's, there's several meters of building setback and so on, but is there a belief out there that suddenly the street is gonna be really narrow? Well, let's put it this way. I would rather stand and face a bicycle than a car. Yeah, but we're talking about distance. Yeah, I, I know, it. but I would stand waiting for the light to change. If that was, if that was an issue that I had to get across a certain number of minutes or seconds, then I would make sure I didn't get hit by a bicycle, of course, but I would stand in the bicycle lane and really? cross. Really? Yes, I would. I have done it in the rest of the city. I've done it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Andrew, your, your time's up. Thank you. Or no, your time's starting. Starting. Janet's up. Uh, okay. I am Andrew Simon. 
and I have lived in the affected area for 18 years, during which I've been the president of a very successful condominium corporation. And I love the area, and I have no script, and I have no data. I'm here to speak from the heart, and I want to say that I love, I love option one. I think it's great, and I think it would make our neighborhood, which is now the neighborhood of tons and tons of people who live in high rises, a, a pleasant and delightful place with more space to walk, more space to have patio restaurants, and just a place of pleasure uh, rather than just a dumpy road. And as I understand now, York Region is also narrowing the, uh, when, when the subway is extended to Richmond Hill, uh, they have a plan to narrow the Young Street down to four driving lanes. So I think it would be not a huge problem to have four driving lanes. And I have also noticed that, um, um, you see, as you know from, I know from experience, that um, people who oppose something tend to be more vocal than people who are in favor of something. And I've noticed that uh, around what I first perceived to be just enthusiasm about this wonderful thing, uh, I've noticed that there's now a faction of people who are rabidly opposed to this, and they make themselves very often and very prominently heard. So the reason I came today is to make sure that you hear from not only opponents of this thing, uh, but also um, people who are enthusiastic about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fillion has a question for you. Um, Andrew, just to elaborate on that last point, um, can you confirm that there has been a lot of consultation um, with people who live in the area? Are you personally aware of that? Yes. Um, in fact, our councillor, Fillion, has uh, made a point of getting himself invited by the several condo corporations, I believe about 20 of them, uh, to make himself available to speak about this thing at the, and to answer questions about it. And what he also did was at the end of each of these informal briefing sessions, he asked to take just a straw poll of the room at the end of the discussion as to how many people are in favor of it or against it. In my own condo corporation where we had such a meeting, uh, I think from memory, about three people were against it and maybe 30 people were in favor of it, but that's not a scientific result, that's just by observation. So I believe there has been a lot of consultation on this and everybody has had a chance to be heard. Thank you, Councillor Holliday has a question for you. I thank you for talking to us and somebody that knows the neighborhood well. Pardon? I understand you know the neighborhood well because you've been there. I guess so. If, if, the, if the lanes are narrowed, what, what do you think will happen to the traffic? Well, first of all, as others have said, the existence of Doris and Beecroft uh, were designed to take traffic off Young Street. And also, as another speaker said, the future is not in cars. The future is in people and not in cars. Yeah. We're trying to encourage people to leave their car, even if they own a car, to leave it at home, especially at rush hours, and take public transit. Young Street has an excellent public transit system because the subway during the rush hour is like every two minutes, I think. And it's a huge long train. I just took it this morning. I'm retired, so I don't often take it during the rush hour, but today I did and it was. So would, it, would another way to say it is, you'd like to see us make the drive so miserable that people give up? Yes. I mean, is that, yeah. Short answer is yes. So that's a, that's a fair paraphrase. That's an overstatement. Okay. 
An overstatement. To That's just another way to say it. Whatever, but yes, short answer is yes. Okay. How would, how would the residents feel, though, that I know it's busy in rush hour and the cars back up and it kind of flows a little better, but the, a, re, a realistic outcome would be is the rush hour would extend a little earlier and a little later. So what you'd be looking out on the street is a rush hour that started 2 in the afternoon and went till 8 o'clock at night rather than, say, something like 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Do you think you'd be ahead or worse off if something like that was going on? In my opinion, and I have no science on this except what I read in the paper, uh, I think the effect would be that the car traffic on Young itself would be reduced, partly by the other two streets and partly because the trend, as somebody pointed out, is to fewer cars. And because it's the policy of the city, I believe, to persuade people by offering them a very good public transit system to persuade them to leave their cars at home. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Hamish Wilson is next, and I'll just warn the next two speakers are Don Cornelius and Pam Churchill. Okay, Hamish, you can start. Yes, good morning still. Uh, I'm not totally up in this area, shall we say. Uh, I did get up there last night, and I have been up there before. Uh, this is something new, perhaps, uh, and is a bit of informa new information, perhaps, uh, maybe not. Public transit is the key to the traffic congestion problem, and Mr. Gardner himself saying there's no question about what is creating the congestion problem. It's cars from 1958. Um, if we provide for cars, we get uh, car traffic, and we have enough issues with the car traffic. Uh, that we really need to be uh, providing the better transit. And this is one issue that I think is not being fully explored with this in that I think the current process is looking at it in a little too narrow a, uh, uh, a field um, because uh, we have to have that corridor view and my corridor includes the subway and it certainly has included the subway in the Bloor Danforth uh, uh, discussions and we haven't done nearly enough there. Uh, so if we did it started to have a people flow count, I think that the subway would win out, followed perhaps by the car drivers, perhaps by the pedestrians, then maybe the, 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 the cyclists. Uh, but in order to have that corridor view, we've got to actually assert the rights of those paying customers on the subway to have some right on that young corridor itself on the surface. Because yes, the, tr the subway may be excellent up in that area, but as it comes further south, it gets jammed and it is not working. The January 30th overload was a severe indication of dysfunction. You are beginning to have to do something real now about this entire corridor. So quite honestly, I think we should be th having a more corridor perspective about how can we do things on the surface to actually maybe improve the transit. And here's a suggestion. I thought more about this on the Danforth, on, on Young Street, on Bloor. A reversible busway model after Jarvis, where you actually take the center of the road, make it priority transit, like Curitiba, where they had 1% of the uh, cost to provide a, a subway capacity. Uh, I know it's an idea that may be half-baked, no question about it, uh, but that's the sort of solution that we need, especially lower uh, on the subway, lower young, uh, say Eglinton South or Davisville or uh, St. Clair even, and something else on the Danforth. And being up there last night, I, I was, the, the sidewalks are pretty wide already from, from my urban standpoint, uh, mostly bluer and, and, and south. So, why not do a different thing of having a somewhat separated uh, lane there, like this is where the curb is right there now. Yeah, so there's lots of things to do. Uh, I think the Places to Grow Act, if we observed it, would give that option one. You should be nudging the province to improve the north-south transit in the uh, Young Corridor, including the Richmond Hill line. And we need a development freeze and no extension of the subway north. Okay, we're going to move on to Don Cornelius. Thank you. Is Don here? There he is. Welcome, Don. And then Pam Churchill. And then after that, it's Ann Brooke and then Frank. Welcome. Go ahead. How's this? Yeah, then we can hear you. <clears throat> I'm Don Cornelius. I'm a Midtown Toronto resident. Um, I don't uh, represent a group. I too am familiar with this area on Young Street. I happen to have a girlfriend whose apartment is a block off of Young. We spend a lot of time on the street. 
but I'm more familiar with it through my work where we organize and, um, and uh, move and park large work groups and crews in the GTA. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 some years and the rush hour and the congestion traffic in the GTA has increased exponentially during this time. Like many industries, uh, we are facing growing productivity losses because of traffic. We're also hit hard by the shrinking parking available within the City of Toronto. Uh, and yet, I'm here to advocate for the reimagining Young Street project. Uh, Young Street north of the 401. Sorry, cool phone call came in. Um, the uh, Young Street north of the 401 uh, uh, needs this. Mm -mm -mm. Anyone who stood there during sunny days when the sidewalks are crowded know this, and Young Street will need it even more in the future as the density increases and more families live in the towers, often without cars. Residents who think that putting Young Street on a diet of less cars would actually increase traffic haven't done their homework um, uh, or viewed their examples from around the world. The opposite is likely true. The cars actually do go away, even without a congestion tax. Um, the cars that want to park and shop and live on Young Street would still be able to do it. The ones that are traveling through the corridor, the highway of car commuters from the 401 are the ones that should flow around this area on Beecroft, not through Young. We need to give Young Street the safe sidewalks and bike lanes for families that it needs to become the highly desirable walkable downtown in North York. Uh, I'm here as a resident out of frustration uh, after being at the meeting last year with the designers and, and seeing this stuff on January's meeting here to say how disappointing it is to hear that the mayor doesn't think he can support this project. Uh, I'm here to ask that other councillors to think for themselves and, and uh, to not follow his lead on this one. Follow Vision Zero. Follow Complete Streets. Follow Good Design. The city needs to prioritize moving people over cars. And uh, I say this as someone whose work will actually be a bit more difficult after this project, but you know this area of Young Street would actually become more desirable for its work, you know, for our work than it is now after this. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, we're going to move to Pam Churchill. Still have about 11 speakers, so there's one added name at the bottom that you're not seeing, Mariana Fuhrer, it's last. Um, so uh, if we could have Pam. Yes, I'm here. Oh, there you are. You're <laughs> sneaky. Welcome, Pam. You've got three minutes. Go. And thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I live on Beecroft Road. I have lived there for 30 years. I hope to live there for a long time yet to come. And as it turns out so far, I'm the lone resident from Beecroft Road to be before you today. Now, I have walked that stretch between Shepherd and Finch many times, sometimes in my daily activities, and sometimes with Councillor Fillion, who has taken us on walks so that we would look at that streetscape through different eyes. And it's certainly uh, no argument that the streets, the sidewalks, the streetscapes needs to be improved. I have been part of the consultation process, the, both the process that was provided by the city, and it was very well done, and I have attended three of Councillor Fillion's local meetings. In my opinion, the best option is the Transform Young Street option. I think the process for getting there has been sound. The evidence is solid. The expert opinion is impressive. And for me, this is the way to make Young Street our main street and not a highway. I think this is the best option for our neighborhood. And I think it's the best option for our city. And I want to conclude with one thought. This is, for me, even bigger than what you choose to do with my street. I want to live in a city where evidence and expert opinion drive the decisions. And I'm going to repeat that one last time. I want to live in a city where expert opinion and evidence drive the decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question from Councillor Fillion and then Councillor Holliday. 
Uh, Pam, so as, as you mentioned, you've been out to several meetings. I have been um, telling my colleagues that most people, most residents, uh, certainly the ones who've come out to meetings, um, support this, support the transform option. Um, some people are skeptical. Am I making that up? Uh, no, you are correct. That is what has happened, but that certainly doesn't mean that there aren't people who do not like the option. Right, but... But the majority, most, you have moved, every meeting that I've been to, you have swayed the opinion to support this option. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming to speak to us. So uh, to be clear, you're on, you're on Beecroft? You live yes. on Beecroft? So the, the expert opinion that I got was that the ring road design was set up in a way to take the pressure off Young Street. And someone spoke today and others have mentioned to me that the expectation is that the traffic will go to Doris and Beecroft when we constrain Young. So I guess I, I put to you at a very personal level as a resident, um, are you prepared to accept more cars on the street that you live on in lieu of a change on Young Street or would you rather have a bike lane there instead of the extra cars? I, I am willing to accept greater traffic on Beecroft. I do think that, as many have, uh, other speakers have said, the car is not the future. So we may experience increased traffic in the short term, and I know that won't be welcome for everybody, but the future lies in the vision behind the first option to transform Young Street. Okay, I, th I think I an you answered my question, but I'll ask it anyways. Do you think all your neighbors would feel the same way? No, some do not. Okay, fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to move to Anne Brook. And Anne, thank you for being so efficient up there. So go ahead. Community Association, I, I am here to express our enthusiastic support for implementing the, the Transform Young option. This is a rare project that is people-friendly. The North York Centre is supposed to be a people-friendly place, vibrant and dynamic. Many condo towers have been built and thousands of people have moved in. It is too late to move them to an out-of-the-way location. If Young Street is not the right place for a Main Street, then where is the right place? If the sidewalk in front of the condo towers is not the right place for a wider sidewalk, how far will people have to walk to get to a sidewalk that is wide enough to use? You can't have low-density transportation serving high-density buildings. It just doesn't fit. Part of the justification for the condos was that there would be a transportation split, if I remember correctly, of roughly half cars, half non-cars, foot, bike, and TTC. Eight lanes of road were added for the cars. Space on the ground for pedestrians and bikes are, is overdue. We need protected bike lanes as people are already biking on the sidewalk. It is simply too dangerous to bike on the road. It has never made sense to me to allow condos to trade car parking spots for bike parking while there was no bike path anywhere nearby. It did save them a lot of money though. Are they willing to retrofit more car parking rather than allow a bike path on the road allowance? Have they acknowledged the extra space required to access a bike lane if it is moved to Beecroft? Are they fundraising to pay the extra cost? The naysayers complain that there will be a shortage of parking and drop-off facilities. But again, providing these were requirements for the new developments. Why is this a problem? I don't understand how the traffic concerns that others have expressed apply to this project. This project does not add any cars to the road. Where are their complaints about the projects that do generate traffic? Increased traffic has never been an obstacle when a development is proposed. The best way to reduce traffic is to provide other ways of getting around and keep the tri trips short. A walkable Main Street achieves this. 75% of the traffic is through traffic. They are not interested in which road as long as it is fast. I have as yet to hear that they are stopping off to shop. Share the road. The traffic lanes in contention are currently restricted bus lanes during rush hour and pay, paid parking the rest of the time. There will still be 12 lanes dedicated to motor vehicles, Young plus the ring roads. This is twice the size of Bayview and Willowdale combined, which should be ample to absorb the limited traffic. Wrap up. 
Um, if, if there is a real numbers-based concern that traf Transform Young will be too detrimental to traffic, will they consider these real-world solutions? Stop building more condos which add traffic, widen the ring road, meter the condos to ensure that they are not contributing more traffic than promised, implement a congestion charge for anyone crossing steels. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off there. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much, Anne. Uh, Frank Nasca, and then after that, we're Tom Worrell, and then Bill Keenan. So if you could be ready. Go ahead, Frank. Thank you, Madam Chair, Councillors. I'm here for the first time in a City Council session because I feel very strongly about this. Uh, this is a 50-year issue. Okay. I live right in the middle of the area on Beecroft Pan, uh, uh, right in the middle uh, at Park Home, and as such, I realize what's happened in that area in the last few years. The density has increased incredibly. Tens of thousands of people live there. Do we want to support the tens of thousands of community residents or the people from York Region? So I'm not going to go through the rest of my bullet points uh, because I want to rebut some of the previous arguments that have been made. Uh, really, this is an issue of do we want to support the York Region drivers or the people in the neighborhood who need sidewalks. The sidewalks in that area are deplorable. I'd ask the councillors here, aside from Mr. Fillion, how many of you have walked in that neighborhood in the last few years? Thank you. Thank you very much. So you realize how much the sidewalks in some places in front of the North York Mail Lastman Square are great and in other areas are just squeezed together where you can't really walk through very easily unless you're the only one walking through there. Uh, if you're talking about, and I, I'm doing this more in my bullet points to rebut the arguments for traffic, you need sidewalks for the businesses there. The people who shop in that area aren't the people coming down from York Region, they're the people who live in the area. And you get there by walking. And you don't get there by trying to drive two blocks, trying to park three blocks away and then walking, you do it by walking from your home. I, I addressing, I'm looking at Mr. Holiday because I realize you're strong, you, you seem to be leaning against the, the proposal. Um, so I think you need to think about the residents of Toronto, not the commuters, as other people have said. It's not a matter of, you know, you lose a minute here or there. It's a 50 year decision. We're not going to be having the same kind of congestion issues, same kind of traffic patterns, the same cars that we have now. We have to look in the future, not the past. Um, the last thing I'll mention, and they, I know that part of the reason we're even here and that we're looking at other options is because Councillor Shiner, who represents one side of Young north of Finch, is the one who sort of forced a reevaluation of the. Um, the, the city staff uh, original proposal. And he lives, or shortly, his area on the east side of Young is a strip mall heaven. 10 seconds. Okay, strip mall heaven where you don't have uh, people walking, you have people driving. South of Finch, everybody walks. It's totally different than what he has in his riding or ward and uh, what exists in the area we're not, that we have under discussion. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, we're gonna move, th move on, Tom. Thank you, Bill, go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. My name is Tom Whirl. I'm I sorry, Tom, I was one ahead. Thank you, Frank. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I'll start again. Franks and Toms and Bills. My name is Tom Whirl, and I'm a board member representing Lytton Park Residents Association the largest and most active residence association located in the heart of Worth 16 and borders on Young Street just south of the 401. We have approximately 3,000 residents in our area who are committed to active transportation, sound environmental practices and traffic safety. We are in full and enthusiastic support of the Transform Young option as proposed by Councillor Fillion. Studied and consulted in depth twice, with businesses and residents by the city planning staff and endorsed by several environmental and street safety advocates. Our community is very similar to that of the transform area of North York, and it works. 
We have a vibrant offering of shops and businesses along Young Street. We are under tremendous residential condominium intensification and commercial tower construction. The vast majority of people who shop and transact businesses are from the local area. Our stretch of Young Street also has four lanes that, are that very adequately handle traffic from the north-south flow, same as the proposed Transform Young option. It works. We would gladly welcome the opportunity that is before the people of North York to transform Young in our area as well. In addition to my board position at LPRO, I'm a passionate active transportation advocate and retired COO and co-founder of Ticketmaster Canada. I mention this because my successful career of 43 years has taught me the importance of the relationships between businesses and communities and the making of prudent and informed decisions. These value, the, those values are very germane to the Transform Young discussion. Listening. You must listen to the experts. Your planning department has given you the tools to formulate the vision, and now you can provide the leadership. Vision is critical for identifying future opportunities. Great cities around the world are taking bold steps in transforming their streets at a rapid pace, from primarily an automobile thoroughfare to people-friendly corridors and destinations. Toronto is a great city, and I have no doubt anyone on the PWIC committee would disagree. We need to embrace this vision for our future. Leadership is having the courage to carry out what you believe in and not being unduly influenced by the naysayers who offered watered-down solutions or our preference for keeping the eternal status quo. Ten seconds. Our plea to you, our elected officials, is do not fail the people of North York and Toronto. Now is not the time to cater to nimbyism, negativity and short-sightedness. How you vote today will have a lasting consequence for all of us. We implore you to listen to the experts, have vision for the future, and practice leadership in this critical decision. Vote Transform Young. Yeah, we've got questions for you, Councillor Fillion. Um, thank you. As a successful uh, business person, um, what do you think, looking towards the future over the next 10, 20, up to 50 years, um, what kind of environment do we need to create to make businesses successful that are located on Young Street? Well, that's a very good question. The future is very hard to see, but we actually do have real-life situations in cities across the globe, um, whether it's Paris or London or Montreal or Vancouver, who have, who have embraced this complete street concept, and it absolutely helps businesses. It helps businesses and it helps the, the residents who are living in those, in those areas. So we have practical, real-life evidence. Thank you. I have a quick question. So, um, Tom, you, Linton Park is south of the 401, west of Young? Is that correct? That's correct, Your yeah. association? That's in Kristen Carmichael Grubbs' ward, and we border your uh, yeah, ward. Yeah, so you're, so you're right there under 401. And would, would your, did your board vote on this to support this? Yeah, my board is fully, fully endorsed. They asked me to come today. And would they support bike lanes uh, on that stretch of Young that you represent? They would also. They, all the way down, they would, they would support, right, they, right they to vote on that uh, to support? Yeah, they would like to have lanes right down to Eglinton. On. Right down to Eglinton. So that's, that would be south of your area. Because you cut off. Right, we, we cut off at Roselawn. Oh, so, oh, okay, Sporting Life Close. is kind of about where you end. Okay, so your, your board did vote on that? My board, I, I can't remember a vote, but my last board meeting, I was told to come down here, or asked to come down. But did they vote on, the vo on, on bike lanes in your stretch of Young? On we, your stretch of Young, which is really just south of what we're no, talking about. It's a little premature. We're not looking at that at this point, but there is a desire within the board and the community to have bike lanes on Young Street in our area. In your area, there is a desire, but no vote. Just so I'm clear. Uh, no vote that I'm aware. No benefit, an, yeah. uh, not an official vote. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. All right, thank you. I think that's it. So we're going to go on to Bill Keenan. Hello, uh, I've lived at uh, Young and Shepherd for almost 20 years, and I fully support the Transform Young option, which would remove two lanes of traffic on Young Street. I'm also a longtime member of the. Uh, Lansing Homeowners Association, the West Lansing Homeowners Association, and to my knowledge, uh, uh, there's been nothing from them to say they are against this. 
I'm going to quote from a Globe and Mail article from October 2015 about the closing of a large part of the West Side Highway in New York City in 1973. Sam Schwartz, Director of Research and Traffic Studies for New York's Traffic Department. It was up to him to figure out the impact on drivers caused by the closing of part of the highway. Mr. Schwartz recalled, re recalls comparing studies done in the autumns of 1973, when the highway was closed, and 1975, two years later. The results were surprising. A lot of traffic just disappeared. Councillor Halliday, are you listening? There was an uptick of traffic on the avenues toward the west of Manhattan. Traffic, uh, transit would also absorb some, but these increases couldn't account for all the lost capacity. Tens of thousands of car trips evaporated. The counterintuitive finding is most easily understood by thinking of traffic as a gas instead of a liquid. Research shows that traffic will expand to fill new space. It will also shrink if the available space does. Where does it go? People modify their behavior. Some will switch to transit or other modes of travel. Others will tweak when they drive. And, disc and discretionary trips, a surprisingly large portion of rush hour traffic may be rethought. Let's give the people of North York a vibrant, livable, urbane main street. We shouldn't be held hostage by commuters from the 905 who use Young Street as one long off and on ramp for the 401. And we shouldn't be held hostage by local residents and business owners who fear the sky will fall just because two lanes of traffic are removed. The sky didn't fall on the west side of New York. What they got instead was a vibrant, livable, urbane neighborhood. This isn't about a war on cars, this is about a balance with cars, because cars are not the most important part of modern urban planning. Please don't succumb to fear-mongering. Embrace the transform young option and embrace the future of cities. Thank you. Thank you very much. W would Councillor Halliday like to ask me where the cars will go? <laughs> What's that? Are you okay? Because we're running out of time. So, so where do you think the cars are going to save us the time? Save us time. Yeah, I think we're in trouble here. Okay. Uh, local local guys will go Beecroft, Willowdale, Doris. <coughs> 905ers will go Bayview, the Allen, Leslie. Tons of options. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Kay Rickardson. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Kay Rickardson. I'm for Reimagine Young, option one. Thank you. Um, I'm a home homeowner, um, a car driver, a pedestrian, a transit user. I live right there. I've participated in all the workshops and public information sessions. After careful consideration, I'm convinced that this project will be a very positive improvement for our part of the city. As I see it, improvements will be a catalyst for improved livability livability additional economic activity that's cafes sidewalk cafes even retail nightlife all that kind of thing i think the area will become a destination in its own right i think we need to think about things like the distillery people like to go down there we've employed professionals who have recommended a plan and I think we really ought to follow their advice. I think that Young Street is more than just a corridor. It's a community. It's kind of really, in a nutshell, what I want to say. I support this plan fully. But I also actually just want to recognize the concerns of Angela Marley and Janet Love, if Janet's still here. Um, regarding mobility, but I think this is something that we can work out as we implement this plan. Where will all the cars go? Well, I know where my car goes. It's a pretty nice car, but I don't drive it that much. I drive around a little bit, but I really try to walk a lot. Now, I live just a little bit north of Shepherd on Avondale, and so this is not really going to affect me too much, but I can walk down the back and get to this nice 
decide what cafes that we're going to have. But right where I live right now, on Young Street, it's razor thin. So we need to take a little bit of a look at that. We have a razor thin sidewalk. It's very dangerous. Where will all these cars go? This is for Council Holiday. Well, gosh, you know, people will do, do what I'm doing. They'll just leave their car at home a lot of the times. I know an awful lot about cars. I used to live in Cairo. That's Egypt. It's absolutely choked to death with cars. I'm living back at home now in my own neighborhood. Seconds. And I don't want to see a copy paste of Cairo into my neighborhood. Where would I rather live? I'd rather live in Copenhagen and Cairo. Let's build that right here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Fillion. Um, hi, thank you. At the, um, at the last meeting of this committee, there was a lot of, there, there were several deputants who said nobody knew about this, we were never consulted. Uh, I think you'd mentioned you'd been to, to a number of meetings and no, no. how did you learn about those meetings? Well, you know, I've been to every single meeting that has been on this issue. Um, Marianne, if you're... Um, I've, uh, you know, <laughs> get your emails and I look at what's going on in there and there, there's information there. I made it my business to get out there, walk up Young Street, pick my way through all this traffic to attend these meetings and look at all these boards and, and write my thing, uh, information on, on what, I, what I felt, put sticky notes everywhere. Some people hate it, a lot of people love it. I think, you know, cars are going away and uh, mine certainly will be. Thank you. Thank you. I have a quick question. How do you address, you said the conflict points between uh, individuals with mobility issues and the, the lanes. I've not been able to get my head around that and we've debated this a few times. So what are your suggestions? Well, you know, I'm not an expert on, um, on uh, mobility issues, although I have to say that my son's girlfriend is actually in an electric wheelchair just like this lady's. Um, I mean, if I was in a wheelchair, I'd rather get hit by a bicycle than a car frankly. Um, I'm not sure that's a solution. I was asking it's not for a solution, but it, it's I would, not a I was solution. asking for it suggestions be because it's outcome. not an easy issue and so I wanted to know what your thoughts it's were. It's not an easy issue, right? we could address it. It's not an easy issue and I think we have to take a look at that. But, you know, I, th I think we do need to reduce the amount of cars we've got. If there's, if there's less cars, there's going to be less of an impact on people like this. Um, I'm, I, you know, um, it's for the planning department to look at how can we help these, these people who have these mobility issues. But it certainly isn't by having God knows how many lanes to cross all the time. You know, it's just too much. Thank you. Okay, next speaker is John Kappen. Is John here? Okay, we're going to move on. Monica. Monica's not here. Well, if she's not here, what are the rules about that? You have to be, yeah, the clerk is saying you have to be, you physically have to be here. He's already spoken. No, we have to, we have to, unfortunately, we have to work within the procedural rules and, um, and being advised that we're not able to accommodate that because I mean, if, if, Ma, if one of the next three speakers want to use their time to show the video, but... Um, Chair, I wonder if we could just set some clarity, because I think clerks yesterday stated that the video was appropriate and could be shown. But there's not a placeholder for it. They, I believe yeah. yesterday they Did informed... you clarify? The cl Thank you. Unless there's somebody who's registered on the list who wishes to display the video, um, they told us that somebody would be here. I didn't. We didn't realize it was somebody else, not the person. I'm registered not the, on the register. I yeah, believe you have you've spoken. spoken. I have spoken. And used your three minutes, so that was the time. So, I, thought, well, I thought this was the time for. Okay, so Monica is next. Is Monica here? Uh, the next speaker is Sharon Harwith, and the last speaker is Marianne Fuhrer. So, 
My name is Sharon Howarth, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, and I would like to speak in full support of imagining Young Street. Um, so I've been working with a group called Climate Fast and who support the Transform TO program. Um, all of you on this committee voted last July to fully support Transform TO. In the most recent budget, and it was only two weeks ago, the council agreed to fully fund the Transform TO program for this year. So all of the money in the world is not going to change anything if you are not including the goals of Transform TO in our city planning and in our creation of infrastructure. Transform TO has a goal for active transportation. This means walking and biking. It is also about walking and biking for 75% of all trips under five kilometers. Active transportation does not include cars. How can this goal be realized if this committee is always rejecting plans that support active transportation? Imagining Young Street is about active transportation. Uh, Imagining Young Street must be approved. It is the type of project that Transform TO calls for. Transform TO is what all of you on this committee voted to support. Um, Transform TO has a goal of active transportation. Imagining Young Street is about active transportation. Um, Imagining, it just has to be approved by this committee. Like, I just don't see any logical conclusion. And um, so people in businesses spoke, and if they're concerned about business, they must uh, want, need people on sidewalks and on bicycle. People in cars uh, are not going to bring the businesses that they need to move forward. So, uh, thank you. Okay, our next speaker and our last speaker is Mariana Fuhr. She was added to the list. I don't know if she's still here. She's gone. Oh, there you are. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. Can I start? Yes, you can. Oh. I'll put it back. Uh, good Go ahead. morning. My name is Mariana Fuhrer. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm a resident of Willowdale, and I'm here to repre represent myself and also Willowdale uh, people group. I am against the project and I'm considering it poor planning. First, I want to mention why there are not hundreds of people here today at other meetings. Firstly, people who live in Willowdale, most of them don't know about this study. Secondly, they cannot take days off from work, show up here, not get pay, and also not to be able to talk. I am referring to what happened in December 19, 2017. And that day, many special interest groups or people who do not live in Willowdale area were put ahead of others and were allowed to speak, while uh, another 10 people who were waiting an entire day and were not giving opportunity to speak. It is clear that priority was not given to Willowdale residents, but to special interest groups. This is not a display of, of democracy here in Toronto City Hall meetings. This study shows a lack of access for paramedics, police, firefighter vehicles, which are not able to reach people on time. Traffic jam will be horrendous and will just make life hell for drivers. Study, this study is a war and also a political agenda against all people people with disability, people who are not cyclists, and people who need to drive. There was very information, consultation, and debate for Willowdale residents about uh, removing two lanes and eradicating parking along Young. As others has, have mentioned, study shows that less than 1% of the population use bicycles. And bicycles are used only three to four months a year. However, the existing, please mention that takes from my time. However, the extra two lanes we are now, we have it now on Young, 
are used by, daily by drivers during the peak hours and for parking by everybody, including older people, people with disability. There is no alternative to the ring road system to resolve the traffic on Young, as they say. Doris is already a busy street, and Beecroft has already only two lanes, and for a long time there were partial construction. To reduce congestion on Young, we should include Willowdale Avenue as a possibility connections to 401 Highway, and millions of dollars should be put. We need to have a democratic elections where all residents of Willowdale will be informed and will be able to participate in election October 2018. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay, so clerks has just informed me there's two additional speakers that registered before 10 o'clock. I was not aware of that. Um, but I want to just take a moment to deal with a couple of procedural things, uh, technical items, just to go back to the, um, the agenda. So we are uh, 15 minutes away from lunch. Um, so there, it, I, I was not aware of this, but clerks have brought to my attention and the legal team that the motion that Councillor Davis wanted to move on the, the green standard, the Toronto green standard, um, there's a bit of a, I guess, a hiccup with that in that it would maybe affect the RFP. So they've reworded the motion. So what we have to do is go back and, and reopen 27.3, a motion to reconsider 27.3 with this new wording, which then does not disrupt the, uh, disrupt the RFP process. It really accomplishes the same thing, but it's just different wording. So all those in favor of reconsidering, all those, um, that's a fine, and then all th that carries, and then all those in favor of this new motion before us? As amended. As amended. That moved. Okay, and then I also want to deal with, I've uh, had a conversation with Councillor Lee, as has uh, our Deputy City Manager, 27.2, the contract award for Coxwell Bypass Tunnel. Again, if the clerk could put the motion up that we had put up earlier today. If we can move this, uh, we don't. If this is a, a delayed, there's a big impacts um, to the city overall. So if you could just put the motion back on the screen, and if I can get the committee to just quickly look at it again, it's the one you saw this morning at 9:30. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay. Item is, Item is amended. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries unanimously. Thank you for that. So that deals with those two items. Now we're going to go back to the uh, item one and to hear two more speakers that registered before uh, 10 a.m. And they are, uh, I think it's Jenny. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny Dibb and then Leo, Papa George. Uh, you. Welcome, you've got three minutes. Uh, thank you, I'll make it very short. Um, I don't live anywhere near the study area. Perhaps I live uh, as far as uh, the councillor from Ward 3. Uh, the reason I'm in full support of option one of Reimagine Young is because where I live in Mount Dennis, I would like to see segregated cycle tracks on Weston Road. I would like to see segregated cycle tracks on Jane Street. And I would like to see the, the vision that is already in place for Eglinton be implemented. In Toronto, there's uh, 95 kilometers of bike lanes, so that excludes recreational trails. There's 95 kilometers of bike, of bike lanes. There's 14,801 kilometers of car lanes. So that's 155 times more car lanes than bike lanes. And you might think for a second, well, hold on, there's a lot more drivers than cyclists, but there's only 77 more commuting drivers than commuting cyclists. So cars are getting not only wider lanes, they're getting longer kilometers of lanes than cyclists. Keep that in mind. If we look at the countries where cycling is uh, successful, if you look at the most successful nation in cycling, the Netherlands, we have 1.7 percent of our roadways, the 5,506 kilometers that Toronto manages, 1.7 percent of them has a bike lane on it. In the Netherlands, 28.5% of all roadways have cycle, uh, cycling facilities on them. The majority of those cycling facilities are segregated cycle tracks, not bike lanes on the roadway itself. I mention this because the Dutch design, the Dutch road design accommodates people in mobility scooters. People in mobility scooters use 
three meter wide bike lanes just the same as cyclists do, because it's safe to do so, because there's plenty of overtaking distance. And the reason why I'm here, even though I'm not a stakeholder in this, in this, uh, in this proposal, is because it's a very small step in a thousand mile journey of getting Toronto up to speed with what a city should look like. We're already great. We already have great, you know, we have great infrastructure for pedestrians. We have less than great infrastructure for, uh, for cyclists, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't just be content with that. We should always improve it. And uh, to sum up, uh, that's it, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, thank you. And we're going to move to Leo Papa George. Is Leo here? Leo is not here. Okay, we're going to move to questions of staff and then speakers. So thank you very much to all the deputants for your time, especially those who came back a second time. And uh, we are moving now to in inside committee uh, or with the committee. We're going to start with questions of staff. We're going to start with our guest councillors who are not sitting on the committee, and we'll start with Councillor Fillion, local councillor. Thank you. Just as a, a three minutes, point. yes, you have three minutes. Be warned. Right, but a, first a, a point of privilege, I guess. As the local councillor, I am not aware of what motions are being moved today. I heard in the via by reading the newspaper that there is a motion from councillor Shiner. As the local councillor, uh, I have not been told about that by councillor Shiner. I have not been told about that by somebody who might be moving it on his behalf or by the chair of the committee or by the mayor's office or whoever else well, might I'll, be I'll involved just, just, in this. Uh, so, so my Councilor point Sh is, I, how, how am I supposed to know what questions to ask of staff when I don't know what's going to be before the committee? Well, that happens all the time, the motions are in place, but Councillor Shiner actually at the beginning of the meeting when you were in the room stated that he had to go to another meeting that he had a motion he was moving and he was asking Councillor Holliday to move it. So that was clearly stated at the top end of the meeting. Uh, so my, my point is that um, as the local councillor, and I think all of you would agree if you were in the same situation, you would want to know what was going to be moved so you could ask questions about that rather than use up your questioning time and then not be able to ask questions on what uh, is going to be debated. It's just totally it's not right, it's not fair. So. Well, it's, it's also within the procedure, but having said that, you and Councillor Shiner are neighbouring councillors, so I would assume, like Councillor Carmichael Greb and I would, would have a conversation about well, the motions. Well, it takes two people to have a conversation, I believe. Sorry? I think it, it requires two people for there to be a conversation. Okay, well, I'm not going to comment on that, but um, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, there's not much... Why don't I go? He'll so what are you saying? Oh, okay, so Councillor... I can go and he can... Okay, that's a great idea. Thanks to you, Councillor Cressy. Why don't you start? And then we'll have Councillor Holliday show... And is it three minutes for questions? It is three minutes. I'm sorry about that, but that's... Rapid fire. Okay, yeah. so uh, first question to our GM of Transportation Services. What is the percentage of vehicles uh, travelling within the study area originating from York Region? Through you, uh, Madam Speaker, the um, number is 73% in the morning uh, peak and 70, uh, so, excuse me, 74% in the morning peak and 73% in the afternoon peak that are traveling through the study area from, with, with trips, uh, origins or destinations in York Region. All right, so about three quarters of the cars are coming from outside the City of Toronto. Uh, what is the mode share within the study area? So the breakdown in cars versus active modes of transportation, walking, cycling, public transit, and are there patterns within the study area in recent years? So uh, through you, the, um, the split between uh, drivers and transit is sort of the one that is the most dynamic. And so what we've seen between uh, mode share data over a long period of time between 95 and, and 2010, we've seen a 21% decrease in uh, driver mode share. We've seen an 18% increase in transit mode share, and we've seen a 7% increase in active transportation modes. We also have um, information from a national housing survey a little bit more recent between 2011 and 2016 that indicates that the active modes are a continuing trend. Um, so a 21% decrease within the study area in drivers 
over a 15-year period, and that data, that trend is continuing? That's our understanding from the data we've reviewed. Is it wise for us to make a transit decision for the future on the basis of a declining uh, percentage of people using it for cars as opposed to other measures of transportation? I think we have to make a decision based on modeling from what we've looked at into the future, based on uh, the, the patterns that people are choosing to, to travel and the fact that North York as, a, as an active growth area and civic center uh, is going to be a very dynamic and changing place over the next period of time. Uh, we need more transit capacity and we certainly need more uh, active transit modes as well. Okay, on North York as a dynamic and active area, is the Reimagine Young option one compatible with accessible design? Uh, both options that have been presented are compatible with accessible design. Just to be very clear, option one is fully compatible with accessible design. Option one's challenges with related to pick up and drop off and the curb lane are made more complex by cycling facilities. We've identified locations nearby for pick up and drop off in terms of the public realm, which is the impetus for this project to begin with. That uh, is made improved by both options because the, uh, con the quality of the public realm right now is problematic. Okay, so it is compatible with accessible design. Um, in my final question, which option provides more public space and what are the benefits of increased public spaces? So uh, we've talked about this as a growth area. We've talked about uh, the number of people who are accessing transit and trying to support businesses in this area and walking from the local community. The public realm and improvements to the public realm is the impetus for this project and enhancing and improving that quality realm will help people with accessibility issues. It will help people accessing local businesses. Um, and so the Transform Young option increases the, uh, the demand Dimensions of that public realm makes it wider more consistently over a shorter period of time. Uh, Enhance also increases the public realm by a lesser dimension, but uh, will will certainly improve it. And, and one of the things that city planning has done over time that new buildings have been uh, uh, required to do is to set back four meters. Uh, and so what we're seeing is an Im increase in that public realm capacity over time, uh, but uh, transform certainly increases that and improves that quality more quickly. Three minutes. Oh. Well, you you were supposed to go after Cressy, so. I think there should be some deference to the councillor who represents the area. I would. This we're at questions. We're at question. I'll go after Council Shiner. Is there any other questions from visiting councillors? Because we're going to move into committee and we're also ticking out of time. Because Madam Chair, the, the stealth attacks aren't going to help. I, I agree with you. So I'll just anticipate the stealth attack and then and I'll ask my questions. So, um, um, what kind of privilege, please? Pardon? I think yeah, I, I'm not rude. sure. I don't think that's proper for conduct in here. If Councillor Filling has something to ask, he can ask it. Yeah. Talking about stealth attacks and things like that. So, Councillor Filling, would you withdraw your comments, please? No, I wouldn't. So then, the stealth attacks are coming from my colleague, Councillor Filling. Are you asking Councillor Fillion, would you like Councillor Fillion to withdraw his comments? I think he's acknowledged that he's the one with stealth attacks, so that's fine with me. Okay, you're okay with it. Okay, Councillor Fillion, your, your questions. So, yeah, so my, uh, my question, first of the first question of staff, and because I'm conscious of the time, is uh, from reading the report, the only option that creates a um, wide enough sidewalk that meets acceptable city standards um, in all areas is the Transform Young. Is there anything, is that, is that report wrong? Through you, uh, Enhance Young also um, uh, increases sidewalk capacity throughout the, uh, the area. There's a few pinch points um, that are resultant that uh, both increase the capacity beyond existing conditions and Transform Young certainly creates white wider sidewalks right but the... without transform young are there some sections that are below city standard 
There are two, uh, excuse me, three sections uh, along the entire study area that would be less than 1.8 meters in Enhance Young. In Transform Young, they would all be uh, 2.1 meters or above. Thank you. Um, I understand that uh, there's a motion going to be introduced that, that um, and I'm not sure the exact wording, but has to do with uh, EA, um, you know, the EA doesn't need to look at Beecroft, and I'm not sure the exact wording, but um, it is my understanding that were we to remove lanes uh, of Beecroft, that, uh, first of all, does the, does the a cycle lane remove lanes of Beecroft? No, it does not. Okay, okay, so that, that's probably dealt with. Um, in or the staff recommendation for Beecroft, I believe, continues it up so that it connects with the um, cycle corridor running east-west along, um, yeah, along the, the hydro corridor. Correct. Yeah. Is that a good idea to do that? Certainly connectivity in the cycling network is a good idea. Yes, thank you. Um, which option, we've talked, we've heard about um, um, people with mobility issues, people with baby strollers. We've heard about 80,000 people within um, walking distance. Which option better accommodates um, those pedestrians? As I mentioned before, the public realm component and having a smooth and level public realm to get people to transit and back and forth to shopping in their homes is a critical accessibility improvement. Uh, the challenge in curb space with pickups and drop-offs for issues such as wheel trans uh, in uh, Transform Young would be accommodated uh, at corner locations um, and could also, of course, uh, traverse the, the bike facility um, and enhance Young, uh, which would still uh, inc include on-street parking, would be more compatible with pick up and drop off. Time's up. Okay, so um, I, we're just about two minutes away from recessing, uh, whether we have a, cho a choice or not, but um, there has been a suggestion from a committee member to continue through lunch. Um, the feeling is that there's not, uh, there's only a bit more on this item that we have to uh, deal with, and then there's three other items that could, uh, given conversations around the table, it could be dealt with very quickly, the four, seven, and eight. So that recommendation's being put forward. I unfortunately cannot stay during the lunch uh, piece, but if, uh, if we have quorum at four, we can continue. So the feeling is that we can deal with this quite quickly. I think there's support for that, so all in favor? I have meetings to lunch. I could stay 10 minutes or so, but then I have to go. To could you stay half an hour? I, I, I don't believe so, because I- Could you push it to half an hour? Because we're just really concerned we're gonna lose quorum after lunch, which would be I because we I, didn't I know, I was I, not advised Councillor Mamaly wasn't coming, yeah. so. No, I understand that. And, 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 and I appreciate that. I can push it to 1245, but then I have people waiting for me in my office. And I have well, then I think we continue to go and see what we can. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So we're going to at least try to attempt to finish this item. Thank you, uh, Councillor Peruzza, for that. And if you can push it any further, that would be great um, if you're able to. Okay, let's continue on. So, Councillor Shiner, your, are, you have any questions? No questions of staff into committee. Any questions of staff from committee members? Councillor Lee, you don't have any? Okay, we're gonna move to speakers. Um, and so the first speaker, I'm guessing it would be Councillor Cressy. Councillor Cressy, three minutes. Thank you, Chair, and I'll, I'll be brief on account of the time. Um, the whole point of this is to redesign Young so that it is more than simply a street to move through, but a street as a destination. That is the whole point of this multi-year long process. And so if you take a step back and say on the basis of that vision, that a street is a destination, not just a thoroughfare, the only option that accomplishes that is the reimagine Young option. That is a vision for an urban downtown in North York. North York deserves that. And it deserves that, and this vision deserves that for three reasons. First, North York deserves a vibrant main street. A vibrant main street for business and economic development. A vibrant main street that is livable. A vibrant main street where people want to come, not to drive through. We have that in the downtown neighborhoods where I represent. Don't deprive North York of that at the expense of an urban highway. 
The second reason is that it is and will be safer. A four-lane main street is better than a six-lane street. It just is. Anybody who tells you otherwise just isn't being truthful about it. And I would say, and it's been confirmed that on safety, both options are compatible with accessible design. For those of you who just want to see cars move faster, don't pretend that this is about accessibility. It's not, and that's been confirmed by our, by our GM. And third, the third reason is simply that as we've heard, the mode shift in our city is changing. There was a 21% reduction in people driving on Young Street between 1995 and 2010. So the number of people driving went down 21% over those 15 years, and that trend has continued. So how do you move people quickly? You encourage them to move into active modes of transportation. You don't try to encourage them to get back into their cars. And so I would just close by saying, I've been here listening to deputants. Reimagine Young is supported, not by all, but by the majority of the local community. It is supported by the local councillor. It is a decision that will help to ensure that North York thrives for the next 50 years. And I would strongly encourage members of Peewick to actually make a decision for once on the basis of building a 21st century city, not one in the 1950s. And that's why you should support Reimagine Young, not some cooked up compromise that doesn't solve anything for anyone. Thank you. Any other visiting councillors to speak? Um, yes, I'll be happy to, to speak. Um, so this is about um, the future of this area, but it's also really about the future of our city. Somebody said it's a referendum on the type of city we want to live in. It's a refer referendum on the type of city we want for the future. Um, some people have tried to make this about where do the bicycle lanes go, and that uh, I would suggest is just kind of a ruse to to kill the idea of transforming Young Street. A case can be made for bicycle lanes either on Beecroft or on Young. A good case can be made in either case. That's not what this is about. This is about whether this section of Young Street deserves to have a main street rather than a six lane highway running through it. Um, it's, it's about safety. It is currently uh, unacceptably unsafe. It is that uh, lack of safety is preventable. Um, it's about creating a destination rather than a place that people zip through. If we want it to be a highway, then sure, your main goal should be how do we move as many cars through here from point A to point B as much as as quickly as we can that's not what this should be about we have 80,000 people who live in walking distance of this they deserve something other than a substandard sidewalk they deserve something other than a completely inhospitable environment for their main street they need we need to make it a main street so that the 80,000 people who are within walking distance will uh, get out to it and use it and it can become a thriving um, business area. Uh, people talk about congestion and there's really a number of different views on how to relieve congestion and uh, that's something that all of us want to do. A very short-term view or I'll, I'll even say a backwards view, a view from the 1950s is is create a whole lot of lanes of roadway and that somehow relieves congestion. I think by now we should all know that that's not true and we have 60, 70 years of evidence that the opposite is true. To relieve congestion, you have to, do, to not have a six lane funnel coming down from the 905 area that feeds through the core of the city and creates congestion, not just in my ward, but to the wards further south. We have to do something that discourages the 905ers from driving their cars through the center of the city. If we want to relieve congestion, that's how we have to do it. 
Finally, on the consultation, the mayor asked me a year ago, he said, you know, can you please go out and make sure everybody knows about this? And I was out for at least 20 evenings. And out of those 20 evenings of consultation, there is only one that uh, where the residents did not support the transform option. 19 out of 20, the residents supported the transform option. Thank Why you. would we go out and consult with people and then not listen to what they Thank have you, to Councilor say? Thank you, Councillor You heard that today. Are there any other visiting councillors? Councillor Shiner. I feel so little in this chair over here. So, that's the option with the bike lanes. 6.5 meters for two lanes of traffic, 2.7 meters for the bicycle lane, so three lanes of traffic in each direction. Two for cars, one for bikes. The pedestrian way comes out to be 5.3 meters and four meters of the setbacks is 9.3 or 30 feet from the curb to the edge of the buildings. Same thing, whether it's a vehicular lane or it's a bicycle lane, they're both vehicular lanes because bikes are vehicles. And the pedestrian way is the same in both cases and it's 29 to 30 feet wide. And I was just walking on Bay Street, it's 10 feet wide, the sidewalks. Imagine the expanse you're gonna have. So. What I've been asking you to consider is a safer, longer cycling option that will have the bike lanes run from south of Shepherd to north of Finch, go across where the bus station is now, and go all the way up Willowdale Avenue where you can extend them to Steeles. Instead of something that goes from north of Shepherd to just north of the bus depot and drops cyclists in a, in a bus lane, dedicated bus lane, very dangerous operation. It will also provide for the pedestrian enhancements and the wide pedestrian ways equal to, as I said, or even greater than what the cycling option is. Both options are six lanes. Don't be fooled when someone says it's gonna be four and it's gonna be six, it's six. Because a bicycle way is a bicycle way and stepping off of it is just as dangerous, if not more sometimes for pedestrians when they get into it and they're not sure that it's there. If you take out the lane of traffic, as the report says, you have problems in the two lanes that are left because when people go to make right turns, they're stopped by pedestrians and you're down to one lane of traffic flowing through. Can you imagine one lane flowing through on Young Street in particular at rush hours? How many cyclists are going there? Well, their own studies say 1%. 1% of all the capacity is cyclists. So the option that I'm suggesting is best for us is to allow four lanes of traffic, one lane of parking on Young Street. It's more accessible for seniors and those that are there, as our staff said. In rush hour, you can remove the cars as we do. You provide the additional capacity, which is currently needed. You provide a full cycle lane from south of Shepherd all the way up to Steeles Avenue. It is the option that provides everything. And when it, people talk about the bike lane not working on Beecroft because it's too far away, well, why is it okay to park on Beecroft? It's only a short walk over. Instead of, if you can park on Beecroft, I will sum up. If you can park on Beecroft and walk to Young Street, certainly you can cycle on Beecroft and cycle over to Young Street. So I just believe, and sorry it's a short time, it's a safer, more viable option that provides for both things that we want. <laughs> great pedestrian way and a great and safe cycle way. Thank you. Are there any other visiting councillors to the committee that wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll take it into committee. Are there any members of the committee that wish to speak? Councillor Prutza. Uh, very briefly, uh, it, it's sort of sitting here through the discussion I'm reminded um, uh, I was first elected to North York City Council in 1988. And North York, the downtown of North York, didn't look like the North York we have today. I guess that's turning the clock back, what, some 30 years. 
It looked very different. And I remember Mel Lastman sitting in the mayor's chair, <clears throat> very aggressively so, arguing how his vision for this great city of North York was to create a downtown North York. I remember he, you know, you had all these densities and he was talking to all these developers and he was figuring out what those density levels should be and how, and how everybody should get those to build a downtown North York. The Shepherd Subway, he fought for it aggressively because he believed that that was the, that was the thing you needed to bring people to downtown North York. I voted against that then. Oh, his performing arts center. We need a performing arts center. My, my, I kept saying, but we got one. We got one downtown. We got a downtown. We don't need a downtown in North York. This is like, you know, like look at North York, right? We, we, you know, we need some continuity. We're, we're a suburban uh, community and we should, we should continue to have that feel. But no, he said no. And he, the last man always got his way. That's how forceful and aggressive he was. And he built and created a downtown. Turn the clock forward some 30 years later, we have somewhat of a downtown North York. Mel Lastman created a downtown North York. Got a stump of a subway, got a performing arts center, got a lot of <laughs> central library, got, got lots and lots of density, created ring roads, um, carved out ring roads out of, out of nothing to create a downtown North York. I want to add a phrase, and I know I'm going to get a, uh, an email from my old friend at some point here, uh, and uh, I, I want to add something to that. He didn't create a downtown North York so people could drive through downtown North York. He created downtown North York so people would, would drive to or go to a downtown North York. Not drive through it, but go to it. That's more of a Mel Lastman phrase, right? He might actually say that if he was here. Not drive through it, but go to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe how he would say it. All right. I just want to end off on that note. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good invitation. Are there any other members of committee wishing to speak to this? Seeing none, I have a motion to place. And if I may ask the clerk to put that up on the screen. You got it? Thank you. I'll just put my own timer on. Uh, very simply, the council will approve the Enhance Young and Transform Beecroft Alternative including streetscape and safety improvement, sidewalk widening, and six lanes of traffic on Young Street, along with the provision of cycle tracks on Beecroft Road subject to the following conditions. The property acquisitions required along Greenview Avenue between Finch Avenue West to Hendon Avenue be excluded from the Enhanced Young and Transform Beecroft alternative, reducing the cost of Transform Beecroft from 22 million down to 9 million, and that this cycling connection be accommodated with shared lane markings, Sharrows, implemented until such time Beecroft Road is extended north to Drury Avenue and this section of Greenview Avenue reconstructed and widened. Number two, City Council direct the GM transportation to conclude the reimage Young EA if required on the basis that the EA would not be required for the reconstruction of Young Street and Beecroft Avenue where there is no change to the capacity, e.g. the number of lanes or location of reconstructed roads Number three, Council amend the Transportation Services 2018 Capital Budget Plan increasing the 2018 total project costs and cash flow by 4 million gross funded from 2 million Public Transit Infrastructure Fund and 2 million Capital Financing Reserve. With that, I will um, thank everyone that came to speak today. Um, I did hear a lot from local residents and what I can say is uh, as my privilege on this committee uh, being somebody from another part of the city, I can take a different lens to what I've heard today. And I understand the local belief uh, and, and, and needs and wants about how they see Young Street. But I also have to think about it as a network perspective. And my network perspective on that is it's extremely important to get people moving through this city. 
Uh, everyone seems to dump on the 905ers and maybe even those that live in the north end of the city as, you know, why should they drive through here? Well, because they're accessing their job. Maybe they're coming into this, the city to shop. Maybe that's their daily move through the city. But it's extremely important to their quality of life as well to be able to circulate. And I have to wonder what the next challenge of the next generation is and I'll put to everyone to think about it that maybe physical connectivity is going to be that as the population increases in this city and we can't keep up pace with transit. And we, we try, but people still need to move around to have some life. And I am very concerned about introducing congestion here through a bottleneck. And therefore I have to move to keep those lanes. And I hope we build the other infrastructure along with it. I hope the committee members will support this. I'll take any questions. Seeing no questions, call for a vote. All of those in favor of the options before us? The motion. The motion. The motion. Pardon me. Okay, okay, Councillor Lee. Recorded, Would you like it recorded? Councillor Lee, Holiday, Carmichael Greb. Those opposed? Perutsa. That motion carries. Do we have an item as amended? No. Nope. That's it. Thank you. Get up to the next item. <coughs> yep. You're good. You're good to stay. A couple minutes. Uh, can, can we just do a quick release on Dufferin Street? I got a motion. Okay. So there's a there's a uh, request. I try to make it through this for Councillor Peruzza. PW. PW 27.7, Councillor Peruzza, I believe you have a quick release. I had held uh, that I, down. I do. The clerk, um, the clerk has a motion put a, put up on the thing. Uh, the staff uh, simply moving staff recommendation, but instead of having, uh, this is a this is a small stretch of Dufferin Street that basically spans uh, uh, straddles Councillor Pasternak's ward and I. This is a. So, so what we're talking about is a portion of Dufferin Street that span con spans Councillor Pasternak's uh, ward and uh, myself. This is a this is a lane. We're okay. We're okay. We can hear. This is a lane that uh, uh, was built basically as a busway uh, some years back. Uh, that uh, basically allowed for the running of express buses from the, what was then the Downsview Station, uh, basically to York University. Uh, the subway is currently in the, uh, you don't have the same uh, number of buses on there. So the staff recommendation is to turn it into an HOV three plus lane. And what my motion would take it down to two plus. So two persons in the, in the, in the, in the vehicle would, would do it. Councilor Pasternak's okay with that as well? I, I will support that because this is the uh, Ontario. We're done. We're done. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I think we're good. Yeah. Councillor Pasternak. If I can uh, okay. no, uh, on that. Yeah, no, I just want to thank Councillor Perus and committee members for, for supporting this. Uh, it's been an issue uh, since for the first time I ran for City Council. Enormous frustration with um, empty uh, bus lanes uh, going north and south uh, on Dufferin, Allen Road. Uh, and I think this is a fair compromise. Thank you, Councillor Pasternak. All those in favor of the amendment? That is carried. The item is amended. All in favor? That is carried. Um, I am informed by the clerk that we need to reconsider yeah. item 27.2. For the purposes of hearing a deputation. So I believe I have to ask the committee to uh, open that up. Um, I, I understand that there was a speaker registered uh, and it was not made known to the chair at the point in time. So uh, we would like to invite that person to speak as it is not going to council. Councillor Lee, you've placed the motion to open the item. All those in favor? That's carried. So if I may call George Abraham to the front. Um, welcome. You have five minutes to speak to us. Please go ahead. Yep. 
um, this is regarding the Coxwell Award, with the low bidder at 378 million is roughly about 85 million below the second bidder, which is 462 million, as you can see there, which is about 25 percent lower and lower than the engineer's estimate for the job, which is 498 million. This is a major discrepancy which warrants a much more detailed verification of the bid, as stated in Article 16 G, H, and I of the tender or the RFP. The city should have asked for further information from the low bidder in light of the significant difference for more proof of technical compliance, which is the core of city's procurement policy. The lowest prices, which is uh, compliant with the bid. Yep. So, such verification would ensure that such a low bid, which is of a speculative nature, complies with the stringent technical specification in the tender and further made mandatory under the various addenda. This is a primary responsibility of the pro of a proper procurement process. We can see that the city shares our concern on the non-compliance and suspect whether the project can be constructed for the low bid amount of 378 million from the significant contingency being awarded in the sum of 62 million, which is 20% of the contract sum. We need to keep in mind the original tender already has a co major contingency allowance for crucial sums and allowances within the tender sum to cater for additional works and unforeseen issues, say in the tune of 60 million and around 12 to 20 weeks of float in, in time. In summary, we believe these aspects of another otherwise a very fair procurement process deserve the attention of the committee and should be reviewed further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the speaker from the committee members? Seeing none. Um, I believe, Madam Clerk, we just, do we need to uh, re-vote on the item or we no. just close it? Are there any additional motions? Seeing none, that item is that item is finished. The clerk advises me we don't have to re-vote on it. Thank you. Um, we have item number PW 27.4, which is the feasibility of ensuring the disconnection of sanitary and storm laterals at the time of demolition. Are there any questions of staff? Do we have a, do we have a speaker on this? Pardon me, Deborah Satok. Welcome to the committee. Hi there. You have five minutes to speak. Thank you. Uh, my name is Deborah Satok, actually, um, and I'm a resident of Ward 16. I've submitted a detailed uh, summary of my comments on Toronto Waters' uh, report on capping of the laterals, but I want to just talk a little bit more about my experience with laterals. Um, as you know, sewers are really not very sexy, and for some reason I've developed a passion for understanding more about them and infrastructure and effective planning. Several years ago, after we'd had another chronic basement flood on our street, um, Toronto Water did me a great favour and gave me a copy of the environmental assessment that had been done. It's, I don't know if you've ever seen them. There's two volumes, they're this thick, they're thousands of pages. And I guess they thought I wouldn't read it, but I did. It's a lot of detail in there, but I noticed a sentence in there, it was buried, and it said, cap abandoned laterals on Gray Road. And I thought, I live on Gray Road, what's that? I should find out more about this. Um, and I called the city staff members that I had gotten to know, and they said, what are you talking about? We don't have time to read the whole report. We read the executive summary. We read, you know, the, the recommendations. We can't read the whole report. So I referred them to that part of the report, and it started a dialogue. It took me a little while, but I eventually got them to address our street. And here's what they found. They hired a cons um, contractor to come in and look at Gray Road. It's a tiny little street. Eight houses had been knocked down, and of the eight houses, six of them had uncapped laterals. That's 80% of the homes in our street had uncapped laterals. That's a terrible record. It took them some time to fix the problem because there was so much groundwater entering into the sewer system unnecessarily. And that costs taxpayers money to treat, <coughs> that cause, and that contributes to basement flooding. 
Once they were finished, I thought, gee, I wonder what else is going on in the city with these uncapped laterals. It can't just be happening on my street. And I started to ask questions and go and meet some of the crews that were actually doing work on the street. So much so that they got to expect I was coming. And many of them said, we've been instructed not to talk to you. That did make me feel very good, I have to tell you. Um, I want to show you a little bit about, basements, about laterals because, as I said, most people don't know anything about them. This right here is a lateral. It's the pipe that connects your house to the main sewer. Toronto Water says that they cap the laterals. That means when a house is knocked down, they will come in 121 days later and, later and put a cap on the lateral where the red dot is at the main. I've been out and they don't do it there. There is nothing in the contracts with these third party um, contractors that they have to cap it at the main. And they actually cap it where the yellow dot is because it's easier. And why does that matter? It matters because when you put a CCTV camera in that main sewer, you can't see which ones are active and which ones are capped. There's no way to tell because you can't see the cap. You just see an opening. And so there's hundreds of openings everywhere and nobody knows what's active and what's not. I want to show you something else. Here you have two nice houses that should have their own connection to the laterals. And, and the original drawing on this, they do. But there are, exist in older parts of Toronto many streets with 25, 30, 35 foot lots that have shared laterals. I like to call them Y laterals and so I've drawn them in as a Y because it's easier to visualize. And so now you want to think to yourself, what happens if one of those houses is knocked down? Well, they knock it down and they just leave it abandoned in the ground. And 121 days later, when the city is called to make a new connection, they do that, they make a new connection, but they're not allowed to cap that extra piece of dangling Y because it's on pub, pri private property and they only do the capping on the city owned side of the, the sewers. So those are left open forever. And Toronto Water gave us a statistic of 5%. Well imagine that 5% every single year being left open. That's what's going on. So, Really, the question is, why should you care? And I maintain that you should care because your constituents are flooding. We know that. We're spending $4 million a year on basement flooding studies. We know that we're spending $1.5 billion over the next 10 years on mitigation to basement flooding. And so you're going to look for cracks and things like that and repair it, and at the same time, leave a hole that's not, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And it doesn't follow the industry best practices. The submission I made to council has a copy of best practices and I can tell you that Toronto Water is able to find two cities that do it the way they do and I can probably find a thousand that do it the proper way, which is to cap it before you uh, demolish a house. This is also a health and environmental concern because when you have an open ladder and lateral and it surcharges, you're putting sewage under unsuspecting homes. How would you like that going on under your house? So, in conclusion. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's time to cap the laterals before demolition, please. Thank you. Are there any questions <laughs> of the speaker from the committee members? <coughs> Seeing none, are there any speakers to the item? Can, can we just get a, a me. sort of a, Questions of staff. a two minute, um, a two minute reply uh, from staff on, on, on the state of these things? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So what I'll do is I'll comment on the staff report because we addressed the issues in the staff report. All of the analysis that we've conducted over, over the years, starting with the wet weather flow, and then more recently inf inflow and infiltration studies have tried to document the, um, where all of this inflow and infiltration is coming from and, and, and trying to quantify w what are the major problems. And, and we've done that and we've narrowed it down to downspouts that go into sanitaries, foundation drains that go into sanitary. And each study also looked at the contribution for, from private laterals. And so we'll call that as, as a, a separate category. Um, of the private laterals, you'll get inflow and infiltration from cracked and broken ones where tree roots cause damage and you may get water coming in from that. 
as well, you may get some from uh, uncapped laterals. So we attempted to quantify um, how big a problem that might be and does it warrant a policy change that then would lead to extra costs for homeowners who are doing construction work. And what we put forward in the staff report is that it's a very, very small number of, of laterals out there that may remain uncapped during this process. And to try to estimate the flow, the engineers were saying it's indiscernible. It's hard to calculate that small a flow and a contribution. So our conclusion in the staff report was to add additional cost to a homeowner who is doing construction to cap the lateral at uh, demolition time of the home and then come back to do the subsequent new service connections would add about four thousand dollars of extra cost to that homeowner while they're doing work so based on the small volume of water that we could calculate that's getting in from this situation it did not warrant a policy change and that's what we put forward in this report and, and with the uh, when you have um, a sort of a, 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 a like two properties connected a sort of on private property and then going to 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 yes the y connection the, the, yeah. what do you call the y connection why wouldn't why wouldn't you make it a requirement of people that come forward with those type so so for example you wouldn't allow the same line to be reused in uh, for the new construction right so, so uh, through you mr chair no our bylaw does not allow it right. what we were able to see and we do comment in the staff report uh, when we were analyzing the differences between demolition permits and the number of new, uh, new service applications that came through, there is a discrepancy. And what we were able to determine is that there's probably some people who are illegally reusing those connections and not changing them out. So we're working with Toronto Building to send us notification of those so we can close that loophole and go after those homeowners that are trying to avoid the upgrades. With respect to the Y, so we do provide instructions um, at, at demolition to cap that. And, and most of the builders that we've seen will put a cap on a lateral. But uh, how to enforce that? Unfortunately, Toronto Water does not get involved in the demolition permit. That is tied to the building department. So it's another thing that we're talking to Toronto Buildings about, is how do we deal with, with that matter? Because once it's on private property, under the building code, it's deemed private plumbing. It is not part of... Uh, Toronto Water's right, infrastructure, but, but, but and I have under, to administer under, under that code. But under the new standards, the, they wouldn't, wouldn't they be required to use different materials than what may have existed in the so, past? So through, through uh, Mr. Chair, so yes, you use different permit, materials, but typically what happens in that scenario, if one home is under renovation, they have to put in a brand new connection. So they would cut one of the Ys, cap it on private side, and then a new connection gets put in place and will go straight from the home to, yeah. to, to the sewer main. That's all paid directly by the homeowner. And so the other homeowner continues to use that old connection until such a time as they upgrade and they'll have to put in a new one and then that other one is completely abandoned. So that's the way we've been managing it. Uh, for the most part, what we find is that um, the, the good builders out there are capping the laterals. Um, but for us, for Toronto Water, we have no jurisdiction to enforce that requirement because it's on private property. We control it once it hits the city right-of-way. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Any speakers to the item? Councillor Carmichael Graham. Uh, yes, I have a motion that the general manager Toronto Water report back to the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee in 2018 with supplementary information including the estimated cost of inflow and infiltration to the city, the estimated cost of infiltration from uncapped laterals, and the estimated cost to hire an independent consultant to review the current process and alternatives for disconnections on residential, industrial, commercial, institutional, and multi-residential properties. Um, uh, this report took a little bit of time because um, Toronto Water and the building department did discover uh, a discrepancy um, in regards to um, uh, reconnecting, which is great. We fixed that process, um, and uh, but I think there are still some added questions that uh, that we need to get answers to. Uh, so I look forward to hearing back uh, uh, with with this information. So I hope that you can support my motion. Councillor Peruzza, clarification of the motion. Why 
Just, just to make sure that we are getting um, that we are getting the right process. Looking at other other uh, uh, cities that are doing this, um, I just want to know what the price is because. Toronto Water has, is doing a lot of work on figuring out the inflow problem, basement flooding, um, and I don't want to take away from that work. So if it is cost effective then to have an independent consultant do that, um, then I would, I would rather the Toronto Water guys continue the work that they're doing um, on, on inflow and other basement flooding work. I'm not, I'm not saying to go out and hire someone, I'm just, what, what would the cost be to do that? Let's just see what the cost is because they are very, very busy uh, uh, trying to keep the city from flooding in certain areas. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the mover? Are there any other speakers to the item? Seeing none, all in favour of the amendment? All in favor of the item as amended. Oh, pardon me. I'm, that, that is it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. With that, that carries. Uh, we are over to PW 27.8, Pilot Bike Share Program in Southeast Scarborough. Uh, and I will thank um, the three speakers registered for their patience. It's been a long day. And the very first speaker I have on this, we're going to lose quorum. So the, the, the clerk advises me we've got to come back at 1.30. The clerk advises me that we have to come back at 1.30. So we're presented with the same quorum issue. So we, won't, we will not be able to finish the item at all. I mean, that's the end, that's the end of it if we don't meet quorum. Uh, how many of the deputies say? I, I, I see Hamish there. Um, we have one more deputant over there, and I don't see Miroslav here. So we've got two speakers. In the, they've been waiting all day. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Councillor. I, I can't waive the deputants right. They've registered. Um, unless they want to waive it themselves. So that's... Um, All right, so um, procedurally, we're going to have to defer the item. Um, so is it, we, could you place a motion to defer? All right. Thank you, Councillor. All those in favor? That's carried. That concludes the items. The item the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.